welcome back to another Next Lander podcast. Alex Navarro, here we are in the fall. Indeed. Definitely fall now. It is autumnal. It is cold. It is windy. I There's put my heat on. outside my house. We don't. I don't hear it. I don't hear it currently. Maybe currently. in your recording. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I know you had your heat go on. My heat mm-hmm. is on. Uh, uh, tuned and ready to go. Brad Shoemaker. Mm-hmm. It was in the 30s this morning here, and I built a fire. What? What? I built a fire. Like in a barrel? Like what in you, the living you room? Do? Yeah. What like, you, yes, actually, quite literally in the living room where the yeah. fireplace is. Let's assume you have a fireplace. Uh, yes, it's yeah. quite a nice, it's it's a full-size fireplace with a stove and a blower and everything. Ooh, uh, and, like, and a, like a cast the, iron? Like mm, a, yep. Okay. Yep. Buck stove, I believe. Okay, I'll take your uh, word on it. There's a big old pile of wood out back. In uh-huh. fact, carted a whole bunch of oak down from the neighbors because an oak tree fell. Mm-hmm. And, and they chopped it up? Cu- and he cut it up and was like, hey, free oak if anybody wants Dang. it. Dang. So there is, the wood pile has grown. Some hard wood in that fireplace. Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't know how oak burns. I guess we'll find out. But uh, does, it, does it not have to dry? I look, what do I know? I thought you have he, to like uh, yeah, season I, it. Yes, I, I am with you. He said it was dry. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it's dry enough to burn yet or not. We'll find out at some point. But uh, you're not supposed I mean, to free do oak. softwoods. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Free oak. Free oak. Table. Do get who a slab. Who wouldn't want some free oak? Ed, who doesn't want some free oak? All uh, I got around here is maple. And yeah. you know, fuck well, that shit. It's a garbage <laughs> wood. <laughs> Although tending, building, and tending the fire yourself as an adult makes you start wondering how much like passive smoke inhalation you endured throughout your life of living here. It sounds like you've got the good thing, which is the, it's, it's a sealed door, right? Cast iron door on it. Or uh, is it you, open? you can, you definitely can. Although yeah. it gets way hotter, obviously. If you, yeah. if you close the doors and pull the little slat back, yes. to, uh, it, it fucking roars in there. It's rarely cold enough these days for that. Uh, um, so that's, we usually, uh, we usually that's keep awesome. the doors, we usually keep the doors open with just a, a little screen. Oh, okay, okay. Like, which, I, which means some smoke is drifting into the room. Yeah, we we have a fireplace, and it's one of the bad. I'm gonna just say it, it's a bad one because it is not an insert, nor does it have a door or a cast iron thing. So it is basically sucking all of the air, the the nice warm air, out of the house mm-hmm. uh, yeah. as it goes and drafts everything out. But I have heard the sealed ones that um, basically have an air intake. This is what I've read, mm-hmm. uh, like you have, where you can shut the doors and basically heat the house, really heat the house yeah. with it, are awesome. And I've yeah. thought about getting one of those inserts. Ours is tiny, by the way. But, you can, it's a small fireplace. It's kind of it's kind of scary when you close the doors and you peek <laughs> through that little crack. It's like an inferno in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just at this point, it would just be hot as blazes in here if we did that because it's not as cold around here generally as it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh, but that's that's neat. Do you have any other form of heat in that house? Is there oh yeah, like yeah. A they got central air. air. Yeah. Okay. They they're, they got a heater. There's central. And you got power running for people who missed the ramble yep. cast. It sounds mm-hmm. like you got power. Obviously, mm-hmm. you have internet. You were joining us here. Uh, you're just in the recovery mode now. Yes. Right? Yep. Yep. Um, clean up work. Clean up work. Well. Uh, you can catch up on the, the those kind of trials and tribulations on the ramble cast if you missed them. Folks can go over to the Patreon and check that out. Uh. Well, I was going to talk about it a little bit if you weren't here on the Ramble cast, but you were. But this weekend, Brad Shoemaker, mm-hmm. I did it. I wiped the drive and installed Windows 11. Speaking of a raging inferno. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Inside my heart was a raging inferno. So you missed uh, kind of the tragedy of, uh, of my computer last week. It was not uh, good. Was- uh, during my flight simulator stream, hard crash. Uh, during our uh, Space Marine Two stream, three consecutive crashes. Yikes! Oh, no, four, bad. I think. Um, during the stream before that, the week before, one or two crashes. It was bad, ranging from the game crashing to full on just reboot. Just click, computers rebooting. Like just, just uh, screen goes black. Screen goes black, and, and then okay. one, a monitor comes up a second later, and then you're like, oh, no, this is just rebooting. Uh, I think I had during a call with Alex was for a podcast or something, I happened to just unplug my controller, and I got a complete blue screen of death. Ooh. Uh, something real bad wrong was happening there. Yeah. Um, so I tried... I tried all the stuff. Look, I've gotten a new power supply for this computer back when it was happening before, and I thought that mitigated it. 
Uh, and then I ran <laughs> memory tests. I ran stress tests on the CPU. I ran heat tests to see, like, I, I even uh, re-upped my uh, 3D Mark to see, like, all right, let me just see if this can push my graphics card uh, for an hour here, like, uh, and just sit and, and push it. Um, I, I ran a bunch of different tests. Everything passed. But, you know, then on Friday, it just, it just crashed more. And so I did it. I said, this is it. And I didn't take my own advice. And my own advice would be um, back up your user folder oh, yeah. to, to an easily accessible place. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I've got backups of my C drive, my boot drive that I make uh, weekly. I'll just use those because I can, I, can, I can go inside those backup files and pull stuff out. I'll just use those. Um, and I should have just, I should have just taken that and put it somewhere super easy to get to because digging around inside of that was taking so long. Cause it's, they're so compressed. Those backup files are so compressed. Um, the way I, I use a, a Cronus true image and it makes like these incremental backups and it just takes forever to transfer even like small files and dig around in there. Plus it's not easily searchable by something like, um, everywhere, every, everything, everything, everything. Mm -hmm. It took me a minute to remember. It's been yeah. a while since I touched a real computer. Um, so, uh, being able to search that stuff was fine. So again, if you are looking to do something like this and you haven't done it, uh, recently or in the past, just your user folder is just a great place to just keep for like a year, uh, off to the side because, there are just too many programs where you're just going to want to go grab your profile in that roaming folder or whatever yep. it is mm -hmm. and or your local low or local whatever. Low. Yeah. And just be like, you know what? I just, my preference, my preference preferences are here. I just want to bring these back over. I, I've, Oh, I forgot. I made these templates for the podcast and they're just so much easier. It's going to take me too long. Oh, I forgot what my settings were for this thing. And I remember geez, Louise. So I've been keeping yeah. a notepad next to me of like, all right, next time export my OBS settings before I uh, wipe it out because, but let's just say OBS was one of those ones I wanted to do from scratch because I suspected, I suspect, suspected OBS might be causing problems. Uh, so it is one of those ones that I was like, yeah, I'll just do this from scratch. I'll just, uh, that's a fresh one. For the most part, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did a clean install for the most part, knock on wood. It went pretty smoothly. Uh, how is the experience of using it now? Well, it's very similar to windows 10. That's what yeah. I've gathered. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, except, there the are, right, except the right click is worse. Uh, the right click is worse. You have to go into like more options quite a bit yeah. uh, what? On, on that menu. Yeah. They, but like generally as I, I kind of get around it, and then when you go into more options, it just looks like windows 10 styling, mm -hmm. which is yep. like, this is dumb. This you, is you can, you can registry edit that away. Oh. If you just wanted to, to go back to the, the old one, you can do that okay. to a lot of the stuff. Yeah. So like there's some stuff there. Obviously th there's a lot of stuff. Well, not, it's probably not obvious, but it should be obvious. They've bloated it up with a lot of like, let me help you. Let uh -huh. me help you. And let me stop you from hurting yourself that you have to go in and be like, it's okay. I can see these things. It's okay. I don't need these news items in the corner or I don't need these widgets. I, I don't want any of this stuff. I, I don't need you communicating with me. And it's like, I did buy, 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 buy. uh, and I'll just say out of the gate here, I have a real pet peeve. Uh, maybe it's a legitimate one with not being able to access folders on my computer and manage like permissions issues that windows is like, you shouldn't be in here. it's like, it's my damn computer. I want to go I in here. Damn well want. I, I want to go in here. I am, uh, I am changing ownership of this thing and be like, mm, well, then you might break everything and be like, this, this is not cool. You're not being cool. Windows. You're not being cool right now. So the thing that happened though, was when the, the w first scare that happened was when I installed windows, first of all, when I went to go install windows 11, I tried to do it from, um, my, uh, uh like, a uh, it's not UFE. It's, uh, whatever the other, uh, command line was right. When I, when I put my boot drive in and then it was like, can't do it from here. Your windows, your computer doesn't support windows 11. I was like, that's impossible. That's My literally not true. Definitely supports Windows 11. And then I had to boot into a UEFI BIOS. Uh, or Was it, it that thing where you have to like do a check in the BIOS so that it knows that you can have Windows all, 11? Yeah. So all, the, all that stuff was on already. The okay. TC, okay. TC, yeah, the, the, the TPM, the Trusted yeah. Platform Module yeah, 2.0 has to be present. Um, I think it was literally like not being in the UEFI part and being yeah. in a, a different command line because it was also like 
just super low res and stuff. So I, I, that was easy. But then it was like laggy. I've got a lot of drives on my computer with a lot of per, uh, different partitions. So I had written down exactly what drive letter or drive number I want to mm-hmm. go to because the letters sometimes get, and I was like, cool. But it was very laggy and I had to delete like four partitions, which was very scary because I'd be like, because I'm doing a clean install, right? So right. you got to delete your where the system is installed it's master boot record partition yeah. it's like mm-hmm. reserved re- memory yeah. yeah where's the recovery partition go yeah so it was scary because it's mixed into about 13 other partitions there and i'd, I'd hit delete and then sometimes it would go quickly and then sometimes it wouldn't and then i'd be like okay well i definitely don't want to hit delete again because it, the the icon is selecting a different partition every time oh yes i know i know that one <laughs> for sure uh, and so I was pretty, ca- I thought I was pretty careful, but when I booted back up, my eight terabyte Seagate drive was not mounting. Mm-hmm. And I, when I went to go look at it in the drive manager, it said, this is an unformatted drive. There's no Uh-oh. partition on it. And Uh-oh. it's just, uh, you just got, it's uh, unalloc- unallocated space for eight terabytes. And I was like, fuck you. I, ref- I will not believe this reality. This did not happen. You are wrong. The data is on. I've been here before. I've yep. traveled this road. The data is on this drive. Either I have fucked up or you have fucked up, but this is a partition table issue. This is like, you need to go give me a tool to just get that partition table back. It is here. It is. I, I will not believe this reality that this is gone. And it turns out there, you know, it was like a command line thing where I was able to just go through, recover the partition table. I was like freaking out, but I'm not total freaking out because I feel like I've been here before. It's like, I did not delete this drive. I did not wipe this drive. Uh-huh. You, you just don't have the map for it. You just right. don't know what's on it. That, that's, uh, that, that, that has always been like one of the like most mind blowing kind of examples of kind of computer wizardry is knowing yeah. that if the partition gets deleted, actually the data is all still there. And yeah. if you carefully reconstruct the partition table exactly the same, it's just fine. So there was a, there was a nice piece of software that somebody had written that was just command line stuff. That's like, Hey, w- uh, there are a bunch of tools here. I've just consolidated it. Just run this thing and it'll walk you through recovering this partition. And I was like, great. Awesome. Let's do it. Made it to the end of that drive came back partitions there. It's one of those drives too, where you're like, it's a junk drive. It's my junk drawer. Mm-hmm. But you still don't want to lose it if you don't yep. have to. No, because right? there's some of that junk you I, still want. I, I, dude, that is the story of my entire NAS home server, whatever, <laughs> like f- 25 years of crap Craft. data. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The longer it sits, the more sort of calcified it becomes <laughs> until like, okay, now I can't touch this. Like, this was all nothing to me. But now it's all legacy data and it might be important and I can't m- muck with any of it now. So like, it, yeah, it's that stuff. Here's a question I have as someone who has not made the switch over to 11 yet. Yeah. Are we still in a position where a clean install of Windows is still the way to go? Like, if I hit the upgrade button at some point, is, is it really still, like, you still could run into some weird shit if that happens? Or have they have they not solved that problem? I, my, my sense is they've gotten way better about that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I mean, you, you have nothing to lose by trying it. I would say definitely just try it and see how it works. And okay. If you have problems, you can wipe and reinstall from there. But yeah, I, I think they have... I think the upgrade process has gotten a lot smoother. Also, there's all those options for like, like do a reset, you know, yeah. like you like kind of an in place wipe mm-hmm. and install. Like you can just one button kind of clean everything out and start fresh. So I, I would definitely just try the upgrade if, if you just want to see how it goes. Especially okay. if you're not having issues or like I was having too many issues already where yeah. I, I wanted to wipe out a lot of stuff. Right. I wanted so, to delete stuff. I am so, not that, running into major problems with yeah. my PC at all. That That's what I'm sitting here waiting to hear. Like, what, how about, how are the crashes? Y- yeah. So, uh, so th- I got through all of that stuff. I got everything back in so far. Knock on wood again, pretty stable so the, i i booted pretty, up space so, Marine. Mm, that doesn't sound that doesn't sound 100 percent stable. there was one instance where i came back after something process was running and oh so i so i wound up recovering my user folder from my acronis right i was like okay i'm sick and tired of wait i'm going in here grabbing too much stuff i'm just going to recover this and put it on my uh backup drive uh, i'm just going to recover it to a, a actual decompress it and put it there and that wound up taking like 40 minutes right because it's got to decompress the hell out of that stuff and i didn't trim caches this is what I wrote in my notes next time get rid of all my cache files and all this stuff uh and i came back and the computer was just locked up on mm-hmm. the um sign in menu it was yep. like the uh, uh wallpaper like it obviously like logged me out and went to sleep but i couldn't log back in and that has been the only lock up so far okay the, uh, the other goofy thing that mm-hmm. happened and this is a windows 11 thing brett are you on windows 11 now yeah 
Okay, so so you probably know this. They, it has a new system integrity check, or sorry, memory in- integrity check, where like at the memory level, there's a there's a like a process that runs to make sure stuff isn't writing to your memory. Yes, um, and yeah, uh, like sandboxes stuff more than it used to. Yeah, so like there's this thing, and um, the the backup software I was using on Cronus had a driver that that I guess embeds itself in it also has a thing that's supposed to protect you from these attacks and it wouldn't let, let me turn it on um so i had to huh. figure some of that stuff out um which again i some people when i looked it up were like turn this thing off it, it, it like destroys um frame rates in some games and some people are like it's fine for me you know it's one of those things where like you could turn it off turn it on i just wanted the option to be like okay look i don't use this feature of this backup stuff which is exactly what you're talking about sandboxing things to to then um, uh, uh, check out and make sure they're safe. I never use it from this. How do I delete this process? So I could turn it on if I yeah, want. Yeah, I, uh, I will say there is a whole weird subculture that has formed out there now around quote-unquote debloating Windows to the point that oh. people claim to be cr- constructing their own Windows at distros. <laughs> what? Like, it's, I'm not running Windows 11. It's bloated. I'm running oh, I Ready OS or Atlas yeah. OS. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of crap in there for sure, but like... Like, I went in there and my first thing was just go to the add in uh add remove programs thing and just run down that list of like i don't need office 360 yeah. i don't need this i don't need this i don't need this just take it all off some stuff in there i wasn't quite sure of what they uh, uh are but um you know it is it is pretty full up of stuff uh that i didn't necessarily want but that was the only so far only hiccup the computer is running much better Good. Like, uh, right. it, is, it is booting faster obviously i don't have many startup programs happening now because i'm still piling them back on um you know, I, it's just a weird order of operations things now to get a computer up and running. Like what's the first thing you put on? Is it, do you put on like, like your password manager? <laughs> Is that the mm-hmm. first thing you put on to get everything else going? Do you put on, like I have a, I subscribe to a, a antivirus software. So it's like, do I put that on first and then, um, get everything else going from there? Uh, and then you, there's like three things I want to do all simultaneously to get up running yep. before I can do anything else. But it mostly, mostly it's back up. You know, I had to run through. It's going to be like a week or two before we've gone through a full cycle of like Nextlander stuff to know exactly what I'm missing. And I'm still going in and getting preferences like, yeah, oh, it, like the stream yesterday was like, shit, right. I don't have NDI installed on here. Right. I can't watch Alex's footage on this computer. It's like a solid week or two before you have everything back the way you wanted it. Or, or like, you know, you've run into enough of the weird, why did you install this software? Oh, right. It's because of this. Uh, I am not installing. Th- my biggest problem with my setup is I install, I over the course of years, I've come to install certain things on other drives, but my not my boot drive. Like Steam is installed on a different drive yeah, with all the same. games. Uh, Epic, um, I, think I, I think I had installed it on my C drive, but the games are all stored somewhere else. Uh, but but Windows and Microsoft Game Store stuff gets real integrated into the system. And now I don't know how. So the games are all installed on a different drive. And now how do I tell Windows that these games are here? Look in this folder. I haven't, I haven't gone through that yet. I did it with Steam. That was fine. All I had to do was like launch Steam and then add it back into the registry and get it back uh, going again. Epic is a little more convoluted and their, and their, <laughs> their official fact is so funny because it's like, this is Epic's official thing is like, okay, how do you tell Epic again that you've already had these games installed? And it's like, well, you can't, but what you could do is rename the folder to something else that you have uh, the game in, mm-hmm. start a download, stop a download, mm-hmm. take all the contents from that old folder, put it in the new one, restart the download, and then it should see it again. <laughs> And it's like this is your official thing. This is yeah. I wait, was that's, reading, wait, that's their support page. That, that's their official. Oh, yeah, fine piece of software. The uh, Epic Store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had read that on a Reddit post years ago when I did this too. And I was like, I guess you've just adopted this as your official uh, strategy. That's the kind of stuff that I'm running into now. Of like, all right, I have these things. How do I make Windows recognize these things in a way that doesn't break the machine again uh, and get funky? Um, so yeah, it's um. It was it was a little touch and go in the beginning. It seems fine now. Windows 11, like I said, just kind of runs um, uh, uh, very similar to Windows 10, but it, it is running snappier for me. I don't know if that's optimizations in Windows 11. We had Will on recently, and he was saying that there are some genuine optimizations in Windows 11 uh, yeah, but, for modern processors. Yeah, like the process scheduler is supposedly more advanced. Like AMD processors just in the last like month got kind of like a very significant speed boost. 
Okay. Uh, through a Windows update. Um, I, I don't fully under it has something to do with the way they are like clearing the cache in the in internally in the chip or something, but it's like it was like a big speed up for like all okay. AMD processors from the last like five years or something. So that might that might also uh, be playing a role. The 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 other thing, uh, and then and then we'll just move on to the games here. But uh, the other thing I'll say that I still can't believe is such a pain in the butt is not knowing whether I need to go with my um, like OEM or stock motherboard drivers or just let windows handle it like are the yeah. are the windows drivers better than the 2020 drivers that are still listed on this page for my mother like chipset drivers and stuff right like what should i go with and i went down a road where i'm like oh i'm putting in i think it was land drivers and windows were like dude these are and i downloaded them from the um you know uh official uh site uh, from like Asrock and windows was like, nah, like this, these are too old. Huh. Like this is, huh. and I looked them up and I'm like, Oh no, those are deprecated. Like you need to get this other thing. And I was like, this sucks. This process. It, yeah. Sucks. It's terrible. It's terrible. And the, and the solution for it is even worse, which is the motherboard makers like built in command center type crap right. where, which now gets enabled at the BIOS level. You may have seen, no. I don't know if Asrock does that, but like Gigabyte and Asus definitely both do. There's like a literal option in the UEFI or the BIOS. That's like, like download command center software or whatever oh. it's called. And windows literally looks at that hook in, in basically the BIOS to tell it if it should download that stuff or not. And those things are terrible. Okay. Like across the board, those apps are God awful. Um, but yeah, it's, it's awful. Like the, the, the driver situation on motherboard sites is always super confusing. I think typically when I eyeball build numbers, you're usually getting something slightly older from windows update, but it might have been tested more mm. like, like, because Microsoft does a ton of hardware validation on drivers and stuff, so you might be a little safer going that way. Frankly, if whatever you get from Windows Update works fine, like I'd say, just go with it. <laughs> yeah, there are no um, exclamation marks or anything like that. Yeah, and also, yes, that is that is the true mark <laughs> of you're done setting up Windows. Yeah. Are there any unknown devices left in Device Manager? So, like, and my my build is pre Windows 11, so it's old enough where I yeah. would suspect that Windows 11 has scooped up a lot that, of that stuff. That's so. exactly it. Is that's the other thing is if your if your computer or your hardware is like a year old or less, you yeah. probably need the motherboard maker drivers or the official ones, but yeah, like once your computer's like 2, 3, 4 years old, you're totally fine with Microsoft stuff. So, any apologies if you're watching stuff over the last week and it has been a little funky. This is uh, is my Windows 11 machine getting uh, up and running, but uh, look, I'm a a center start menu guy now. Okay, that was my literal last question. I had to know where you land on center start menu. I hate it, but I'm I'm trying to get used to it. Wait, really? Uh, Well, like, I don't hate it. It's pretty No, 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 I I do hate it. Like, I I, I meant the part where you're still subjecting yourself to it, even if you hate it. I am just trying to see if I can get used to it. I hide my taskbar most of the time. Really? Oh, yeah, I'm a high taskbar guy, yeah. Interesting. Thing. Yeah, I, I keep it hidden, and I get annoyed when it, it pops back up, and I try to turn off. Huh. Uh, I just want it up when I need it. Wow, I'm, I'm so mostly a high taskbar, and then hit the Windows key. When, and okay, yeah, when sure. I need something. Sure, yeah. That's, you know what? That's actually because I've started hiding the dock in macOS, but no, I don't yeah. hide the start menu. Maybe I should give it a shot. But I, d- I did go back to left, <laughs> justified start menu immediately. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's okay. I don't know. The the bigger thing is like I just hate when this computer is trying to like tell me what I want. That's my bigger thing. Is like yep. I like all this news. Don't you think you want this? I really don't. I really don't. These recommendations. You want these? I really don't. I don't want any of these. I'm, that's uh, everything. That's a it's a great program. Yep. Index index those drives. Everybody should run it. I I I probably will never do this for the duration of as long as we run this business because we need just just need things to work. But if mm. If I didn't have production needs day to day and I just wanted things to be reliable, I would maybe think about trying desktop Linux at some point. Sure. But we we just we run too much Windows centric stuff that I just need to go. Yeah. It, not fiddle. Mm. Yes. Um yeah. I think I would I would probably still stick with a Windows machine for a gaming PC, but uh I've used desktop Linux uh um what's the one I use? KDE or I I can't remember what what I Yeah, K- KDE Plasma is one of the big uh, uh, desktop environments these days. Uh, I but I've used it on my like virtual machines for like my uh, coding stuff. It's fine. It's great. Like yeah. it's yeah, it gets it's... what you like. Look, I use like LibreOffice here on my Windows machine. I just feel like a lot of the stuff I use here on Windows now had its origins in other in other uh, distros. So yeah, um, that's my Windows 11 tale. Um, it's up. It's running. You lived to tell it. You're still I, here. Yeah, took me the better part of a weekend. I woke up at 6.30. I had a very busy weekend, so I woke up at like 6.30 in the morning on Saturday and Sunday to be like, all right, I got to start some of this stuff so that 
it's one of those ticking clock things, right? Because it's like by Monday, this computer has to be production ready. Yep. Uh, and I had like a lot of stuff going on Saturday and Sunday. And um, by like 11 or 12 o'clock on Sunday, when I had to stop, I was mostly like, okay, everything seems to be working. Um, uh, I, I can, I can roll forward. But it, like we said, there's always those little things. You're like, shit, this profile is not here. Um, but to segue quickly here into the video games, mm -hmm. like I said, I loaded up space Marine two, uh, a game that we were like, 30 minutes from the end of with Will. Inches. From Inches. The end. And it just kept crashing and I was hosting. So every time I would it would crash, uh, Will and Alex would get booted out of the game. But it would <laughs> it would occasionally uh I would lock up and they could keep playing for another ten minutes. So huh. we tried to see if they could just finish the game while my screen was frozen. It was very confusing. <laughs> uh my torso of my character would be turned around uh, okay. and backwards uh with their legs. But the last crash, my whole computer crashed, so they immediately got booted. Uh, I finished that game. Uh, I think that game is is uh, gets a couple of points off from me for the single player because that game is supposed to be played with other people. That is just that is a no bones about it multiplayer uh, story mode. Uh, they want you to be playing. It was a lot of fun playing with Will and Alex, uh, but I think I prefer the story mode stuff to be geared around a single player experience uh, so, and then yeah. bring it Did into the multiplayer stuff. Sorry, do they just have straight up bots running yeah. around when you really? Yeah, I mean they're I, named bots. They're yeah. they're like story mode bots, but huh. it's it's always has always has that thing in the upper right corner of you and two other slots. That Interesting. Are wow, bots. like an arcade game, <laughs> just like press start to join. Kind of, yeah. Uh, and I mean, every time you load a, uh, into the game, it says joining server, right? Huh. You, are, you are on a server wow. ready to go. That's because uh, I mean I, I've always thought those games. I mean I haven't played this one, but the first one was like somewhat Gears of War esque a little bit. And first one did not but, have this, but right, but all, yeah. but even also even the Gears games were still just fully single player. If you didn't bring people in, you know, like they yeah. seamlessly would add people, but not. Well, I guess they did have bots running around with you sometimes there, but this sounds much more multiplayer focused. It's one hundred percent built around that, and and you know, like outside of the story mode, they have all this other multiplayer stuff which we didn't dive into, and I haven't gone into yet, but um. It was a fun little story. I just wish, uh, I wish it didn't feel like the true experience, truer experience was playing with other people. And once I had contrasted it with playing with real people, it's just much more fun. Yeah. That. It's, I, desi it's designed for it. I think the other thing with me in that game is that it just feels like they have not fully got that thing stable yet. Like even with all, it, it, aside, aside from the problems you were having, like it was really taxing my computer in a way that like even other seemingly bigger games would not. Yeah. I have not had one of those in a while because yeah. this this you know I've got a fucking 4080 in this thing like normally even like fairly big AAA games like run reasonably well. There's just there's a lack of I I guess it's just not optimized in a way yet on PC. I don't know how the console versions of that game are, but like it just feels like it is it is sucking resources for <laughs> a thing that does not seem like it actually should be using all those resources. Yeah, like it's a good looking game and it's doing some yeah. uh, some technical uh, it's not technically ugly by any stretch. Yeah, yeah. It just it, it just things, doesn't but, seem like yeah. it should be doing like it should not be setting my computer on fire. Yeah, it's it's a it's a beast. I think Will had mentioned that some people are even using it as the game to stress their <laughs> yes, systems I've, on. Yeah. Yes. So, like UE5 also games uh, games apparently are good for revealing those Intel problems that have been <laughs> okay. rampant. Yeah. Uh but but uh, fun. I, I, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm sure most people listening to this, you've covered this, like this is common knowledge, but like, did you get the like smorgasbord of 40 K enemies across? Like, no. I know there's all the factions, like, are you getting chaos and then Tyranids and then orcs and that like, not is in it, the single player. It, it's not like um, Starcraft style. We have to represent each faction. We nah. got to give you at least one level for each one. Nah, it's not that. And that's kind of a bummer. Cause actually you wind up by about midway through the game. You've kind of seen most of everything that you're going to be doing. And so uh, who, who is in the hot seat or like, is it, is it chaos? Uh, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, it's chaos eventually, uh, uh it's always initially fucking chaos. it's the, uh, Tyranids, the, the, um, the, the bugs, the bugs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, uh, mostly that. And then, uh, it's, it's pretty much chaos and, and stuff like that later, but there are a lot of factions. This game might have legs on it. I, I haven't kept up with the development to see what's coming down. If they're going to add more stuff, because it is a big multiplayer, uh, push. Also, there's a lot of, there's this ongoing war and that's where I think a lot of the game it feels like one of those games where you, you, you don't even need to get through the story stuff. You really could just jump into this multiplayer world. Oh, like like Helldiver style, like pushing back a front, ongoing war type uh, stuff? I can't say I can't say how um 
Meta, I don't know if it's going the, to that yeah, level. I, I don't know if it's going to that level, but there's like campaigns and stuff. You you kind of oh. and, and missions and stuff. You build, you know, you paint your soldier and you, you go and you go. Get, oh, get gear okay. Up. Yeah. Now I get it. Yeah. Now I, now I see who the, what audience they're going for. Yeah. Um. So there, there. Again, I haven't dabbled into it. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go too far into that talk because I haven't experienced it personally. Um. I kind of just finished, wrapped up the story, and and went on. But during the single player narrative, there are these other squads that are off doing the things that I think you then can go, uh, interact with, like parallel to you. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, while while you're doing those things, but that Space Marine too enjoyed it. Maybe I'll dabble in some of that other stuff um later. Now that my machine, see- it did not crash. Knock on wood right. during okay. that entire time. I even opened OBS and and pushed it to my other computer just to make sure that uh, uh I could technically quote unquote stream it uh, if I needed to. All right, let's take a quick break here. We'll come back and we're gonna have a big check in on it. Sounds like uh, the Legend of Zelda Echo- Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, so stick around. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back, and we are going to talk some Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Now, we talked a bit about this with Patrick uh, Klepik when he was on, but Brad, you have played some uh, uh, Zelda. Yeah. Uh, what do you, well, where are you, and what do you think so far? Uh, I'm, I'm past the first major dungeon when they kind of turn you loose in the world, and they're like, all right, here's some more rifts we've spotted. Just get out yeah. there and close them. Okay. So I'm, so I'm past that, and I'm just kind of roaming around. Are you, are you still in the bottom half of the map? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah I've kind of been chipping away at it 20 minutes a night or whatever. Uh, so uh, I've got, I think the full map open. I'm hoping I'm near the end because I'm starting to get kind of bored of this. game. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't get to see a whole lot about reviews, but I kind of got the sense that maybe Peter's out toward the end a little bit. It's so, it just, the formula, they just keep on doing the, it's a weird game or think to say because it feels so open that you could do anything but the formula seems so rote uh by the time you're doing it for like the eighth ninth tenth okay, time that, that's maybe disappointing to hear because i was planning to come in here and say like oh, i think it's a neat idea and i'm hoping it like really opens up later and kind of gives you more like presents you more challenges for the tools i guess i would say because like mm-hmm. most of what i've been doing so far is like all right how creatively can i stack boxes and beds together Right. To get over to get over things I can't jump over. You know what I mean? Like I can only make three of these things. Yeah. How do I how do I Tetris or Jenga these things so I can jump over this thing? Like I hope uh, I I was hoping for some more interesting puzzles after that, but So my experience has been you get a lot in that game and you get an overwhelming mo- amount for its UI because we talked about this with Patrick. The UI just kind of is terrible for selecting mm. things, right? Like going into the start menu and using the grid, it seems like the fastest way to pick a thing versus going into the horizontal strip and scrolling or sorting through stuff. But you get a lot of stuff and I just found 80% of it I'm not using. And I have my 20% that is just uh, when I find my thing that is useful I just use it. Like uh, eventually you get this platform that just moves up and down this big four square platform that just moves up and down. And you're like, I don't know why I would stack boxes if I don't need to. Like this platform just moves like, um, you know, if you were to break the screen up, it moves like five or six grid units high. Uh, Why would I ever want to stack boxes if I, if I have the room to do this or you get this uh, tile that can zoom across gaps and be like, why would I use four beds when I could just jump on this tile and, and zoom across? That, Unless that, I need that, to, yeah, that totally trivializes basically everything I've seen in this game so far. Because I was, you, I was, coming, I was planning to come in here and to be like, well, the bed is the most useful item in the game. Yeah, I mean, the bed's cool because you could sleep in it and get hearts back, right? But oh, like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, never, I guess I, I've rested in it, but I never waited long enough, I guess, for it to to heal. I had no idea. You just get free so heals you, out of it, and then you get different level beds that heal you faster or slower. Huh. But yeah, they, I mean, they're useful because you can make bridges out of them, but also they start stacking up where you can hit the ceiling yeah. in, a, in, a, in a way. But you, you get, um, you know, and then it's like enemy wise, I, I, I got a, a while ago, I got the, um, it's not a whiz robe. I forget what they call them. The wizards that just shoot fireballs. Uh, I forget what they are. And are they whiz robes in, in Zelda? There are whiz robes in Zelda. I don't know if those okay. are them or not. Uh, but anyway, I got one that shoots fire. I got one that shoots ice. And it's like, these dudes just clean up. They are just very good. Uh, and I kind of pop them. And use them, and you can you can. Uh, I, I assume you've gotten the ability to manipulate objects. Yeah, like uh, move heavy things around. Yeah, and, and you can move enemies yourself. too. So you, okay, you can, you, right. You can lock onto an enemy, 
fire that thing and hold them while your your summoned enemy just wails on them because the ai hitting kind of sucks they miss yeah. a lot yeah. but you you can hold the enemy and just freeze them in place and have your your person just wail on them i, I can't I, I haven't it hasn't been that long since i got the grab things and move them power but i can't believe i didn't think to pair that with the enemies because like I've been fighting some stuff where it's like the like the crows, the ravens, or yeah. whatever, and the best oh. I've got is like the bats, the keys yes. to fight them with, and that takes forever. It takes and forever. They I dodge out of the way right. constantly. I didn't think about just seizing the <laughs> raven and just holding it in place while they kill it, which is kind of savage. Yeah. So like when they dive and go to hit you, you can and again you can lock onto them so you don't have to worry about actually aiming. You could lock onto them and then fire your thing and hold them in place. That all being said, you I just wind up in these patterns of like, okay, I got this new thing. Let me try it. No, it's just not as good as this thing I had. Uh, and so it's some of the dungeons just feel like I'm just pushing through to get through to get to the story or the next major uh, tool unlock, right? Like something that is like, oh, this is a mechanic that's new to the game, which I don't know how many more of those I'm going to get. Uh, the other thing that I find formulaic is the way they it's just mind numbingly handle the riffs where it's like every quote unquote dungeon feels like you're going to do this smaller one where you go in with try and try is going to be like my friend i can open up door here my friends are here specifically in four spots um and then you're like okay i'll go find these four or so every dungeon feels like okay let's go talk to the gorons Goron, where is, I know you're not going to let me in the big rift dungeon. Where's the little rift I have to go to, to get you to open the Gerudo. Where's the small rift I have to go to? How many, where are the three small rifts I have to do to get into the big rift? Gorons, where's it? Uh, what are the water people? The, um, Zora. Yeah. Zora, where are your three small rifts I have to do before we can get into the big? And it just feels like that repetition is like, this feels dumb <laughs> this is so feels i am you just feel the formula more than i have in other zelda games which maybe is saying a lot because right. there's a lot of formula in zelda games yeah exactly like those those other games structurally are kind of the same but if you're enjoying what you're doing as you execute the formula it kind of makes all the difference or more to the point if you're bored by it here yeah. it doesn't do as much for you i also I don't know how I feel about how like three hours into the game at a certain point, they kind of throw in the towel and they're just like, you know what? Actually, you can just be Link. <laughs> totally. Like, you know what? Yes, yes. Even, even we don't know how to make a Zelda game where you never have a sword and shield. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. And you get, you get more p power ups for Link as well as you go. Um, yeah. And then yeah, there's just like an automaton thing that comes in a little later, which I'm not exactly sure why or when I should use it. Um, it's, it's, there's just some stuff in it that feels weird. Or this is the part where I could be mean about it. Feels a little um, watered down for uh, a younger set. Let's say mm -hmm. I did. I did have that thought as well. Like I'm, I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, but it does. It does feel a little more simplistic so far than I was hoping. Like when they when they debuted this game and people were looking at what it was and everybody was like, "Wow, did they actually make a real immersive sim, sim out of Zelda?" Yeah. Finally, but like it feels more just like a puzzle game with a bunch of different blocks. So what's Alex, do you remember if it was Patrick? Did he say this? Or I can't remember if I read this somewhere else that this originally started as a uh, Mario Maker for Zelda. Uh, that actually might have been Jason that said that. I don't remember. Oh, huh. okay. Yeah. That's that kind of makes a lot of sense. Actually, does right does yeah. right like where you're yeah, like totally. oh like what if you could like place these uh, you know what if we made puzzles right. with these yes. people huh we built a system where you can place pots and bushes and yes. beds yeah. right what are we gonna do with it yes and like oh look you're making these fun dungeons but what if you could what if you're in the editor and that's even more fun if you can manipulate these these characters so I, i'm hope i'm hoping i'm near the end here i'm on like the third i think of the next set that you get to of dungeons uh they break it up again um you know you can probably guess the b tier uh, the goron the uh, um um uh there's a temple for a uh, hylia which i which i hylia Hylia, yeah, which I think is one I just finished or I'm finishing up now. I forget what the other one is. Uh, yeah, so far, I, I hopefully it picks up by the end. Um, but I kind of just feel like I'm rushing through the dungeons as quickly as possible using using my go to deck here uh, to mm -hmm. kind of get through. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird that they just let you break most of the game. It sounds like because, like I said, that has been most of the challenge for. I mean, granted, it's like optional treasure chests. You know, it's like yeah. a thing off to the side where you get the hairpin or some accessory or whatever. But it's like most of the actual challenge has been in, okay, what tools do I have? How can I creatively fit these together to get over this? But 
Yeah. Once they give you a thing that just carries you there, what what challenge is there? I mean, there again, don't get me wrong. There are probably better ways to do stuff or maybe more clever ways to do things. But once you, once you have taken care of a good portion of the vertical movement and a good portion of the horizontal movement, um, it gets kind of hard to go back. Uh, and you could see them designing these like platforming things being like, well, maybe you don't have this. And it's like, but I do. <laughs> and I'm just going to mm. skip over this, sure. this whole thing here. The, uh, the only problem with that platform that moves you up and down is it's, it's like four grid pieces long, uh, wide. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so you just fitting it in some places. Uh, uh, can be rough or, yeah. or not right. Yeah, uh, I, I I do like it. Like I I, I think it's interesting and, and charming and looks good. Um, are, are you playing it on TV or not docked? I'm playing it on the TV. Yeah, the okay. Switch doesn't go on dock. Okay, I've I've only played it handheld so far. Like it's a little it's a little framey in spots, but it looks really nice. Yeah, it's on the TV. It's it's uh, Patrick mentioned too some performance issues that I don't know if I've been running into as much as maybe he was playing it handheld as well. Um, I I, I just kind of likened it to about as good as the Link's Awakening. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. uh, it's a very similar looking game. Yeah, same developer that. I think. Is it? This is, I, Gre- this is Grezzo or Grezzo or whatever who've, who have been doing a lot of handheld Zeldas for a while. I'm not sure if they did that remake or not. It's just something uh, I, I don't hate it by any means. I, I think I like the exe- or the concept more than the execution. Uh, it's one of those things where I just feel like the longer I play it, the more I'm like, okay, I think I'm, I think I might be over it. Yeah. But I, I do want to finish it up and just and kind of put it to the side. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely keep playing it while I'm out of town at least. Uh, that is uh, Echoes of Wisdom, uh, the new Legend of Zelda. Uh, we'll we'll see where where that goes. You know, my kids are also like. My daughter's like, this game is boring. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh man, that's not that's a great the kiss sign. of death. Yeah, yeah. That's like, I was like, why aren't you guys playing it? And they're like, yeah, you're playing it. And like, I uh, kind of seen everything there is to mm. see it already for a 10 year old and a 12 year old. Kind of over it. Yeah, kind of over it. Um, the other game that uh, I'm I'm playing here that I am actually enjoying so far, but I'm not incredibly far into is Phoenix Springs, uh, that uh, uh, adventure game. Uh, very stylish, uh, uh, kind of um, a few colors in it, let's say, uh, a minimal minimal palette, but it's told from the point of view of the protagonist where she narrates her encounters versus having other characters voice things, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, when you it, it's, it's cool. Like, when you talk to people, she'll be like, he says he doesn't know much about it, yeah. but, you know, you can tell he's hiding something. Yeah, that really jumped out at me as a cool stylistic touch, which again also means you only need to hire one voice actor, which I'm sure is good on a small budget as well. But she 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 has a lot of interaction. So yeah. you you do have an inventory of thoughts, uh, basically, and and items. It's basically like a um uh uh it's almost thought like a cloud mad, almost mad libs or something, right? Aren't you? Yeah, really kind of like plugging like noun address <laughs> location, you know, noun uh, location, whatever. It's not it's not, not quite, quite like Golden Idol. It's okay. Uh, it's more like um, it's like a thought cloud. What do you want to What do you want to ask this person about uh, the key, right? And the key can either be use key on the door, or you can use key on the person, kind of thing to to get them. Or you can try and combine some things, like oh, use key and this person, and she'll be like, "It is true that this person's name was on the key, but I don't think this is uh, the way." So th- there are a lot of uh, lines for a lot of interactions you can you can do in the game and not all of them are used by the time you complete an area which is which is nice because it doesn't mean that everything you pick up it makes you have to think a little bit about what what you're doing maybe slowing down a little bit now that i'm in the kind of uh phoenix springs area uh we'll have to see where that goes uh it like a pretty strong start it felt like maybe it was dragging on a little bit uh now that i'm in this bigger kind of running around area where it seems like more talking to people. So we'll see where things go, but I have enjoyed it a lot so far. Kind of, it's not nearly as puzzle like, but some Lorelei vibes, probably more Mm. from the design, severe, severe design choices. Yeah. Uh, It almost, this this thought is not fully formed. It almost feels like it's something from like the seventies art stylistically. It's like totally, like if the technology had existed to make games like this mm-hmm. back then, this would have been made in the '60s or '70s. In terms it's got of those sensibilities, for yeah. Sure. Like and, and also the um like the, the style of the writing and the voice acting and presentation and everything. It just feels like like a novel from that time or something. Yeah, I really I really dig what they're doing. I'll have to see where the narrative goes uh, in it, but the presentation I really like and uh, the the single character thing is working for me. It, it doesn't feel like a conceit to save money. It feels right. like a deliberate presentation uh um, design choice right so so phoenix springs um pretty cool so far and it's only 20 bucks um out now on uh, the pc uh alex Mm -hmm. 
We did it. We did we, it. We started our endurance run for Metaphor Refantasio. Uh-huh. No, I very specifically said in the stream deck, we are <laughs> uh-huh. not doing that. Uh-huh. uh-huh. We uh-huh. legally can't. We don't own that name anymore, Vinny. Everybody knows to start an endurance run, you can't ask for endurance run. You have to... It's true. They have to happen naturally in nature. Yes, and by naturally, you mean... Mike Tatum coming downstairs and saying, how are we going to get more videos <laughs> how, up? Mm-hmm. How can, I need a video every day. <laughs> well, thankfully, I've checked yeah. my walls and my ceiling, and there are no Mike Tatum scurrying <laughs> around in there, so I should yeah. be fine. Does your, does your, does any of your walls, walls say work harder? Uh, you know, so I did find a, a discarded <laughs> tech vest in the attic. Okay. To, to, be, to be in our defense, that was absolutely not directed at us. No. That no, I know. was directed at someone else in the yes. company. Uh, so the, uh, it was, and it was two different people. Uh, yes, uh, yes. they both, both, both got a part of that sentence yes. uh, or thought, uh, metaphor refantasio. This is, uh, Atlas's, uh, newest, uh, uh, published joint. I forget the name of the team. Uh, it's, uh, it's team it's, zero, um, team zero, zero yeah. team. Yeah. Like the, like the uh, Hishino team? is the leader of that, of that creative endeavor. Is it the Catherine team? I, I believe that team worked on Catherine in the distant past. But Catherine this ha- and also, I think, some of the Shin Megami Tensei stuff specifically. But look, we streamed some of this. You can watch it. Uh-huh. I saw it. I didn't play it yet, but I want to. This has Persona. This was dipped in Persona. Well, yeah. No, uh, I mean, they definitely dipped it in the same va- UI yeah. vat that they dipped <laughs> totally. all their shit in. Totally, yeah. Uh, is, now, I guess the question is, like, is it just fantasy Persona? And it doesn't seem like it's just fantasy Persona. I mean, there are some very you, s- significant similarities that go beyond the UI in that you are, in fact, summoning what they call archetypes, mm-hmm. uh, which are... Not exactly personas, but they are definitely summoned visions of war- of like different character classes in fantasy RPGs. So like, there's a mage one and a warrior one, mm. uh, and and those are the ones I have so far, other than the the default one. But once you have those, like you can summon them in battle as your magic attacks, or you can just I mean the, the battle menu looks very persona in that it is get your attack on do your magic thing yeah you know defend yourself use an item etc front 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 line rear line there um, is a line system yeah. now too yeah so like you know you want to keep your magic casters on the in the back line you want to keep your your damage dealers in the front i mean it's all very standard stuff in that way it's just that it has that very <laughs> distinct atlas style of like art and you know uh, uh writing and presentation and all that like all that stuff is there and front and center even a calendar yeah uh, you keeping track of the days but uh, no romance apparently well you can do your uh your links your social links no right? there's you, social links but there's yeah. no dating there's you can't you <laughs> cannot have a waifu in this game i have is been that told. confirmed okay. as far as i know yes okay do they call them social links uh it's think, bonds you're forming bonds? bonds with your party okay. yeah yeah uh so the uh, kind of setup here is, is a fantasy world rife with racism and and strife oh they are um, so mad about any race that doesn't have the exact ear or horn <laughs> shape that they do uh and there uh there's a king who's dead there's a there's a prince who's in stasis uh and he's literally princess zelda at the beginning of zelda 2 like he's just <laughs> passed out like wrapped in magic thorns and you got to figure out how to stop that and you're part of the solution uh yeah. you you are part of the solution and, and unfortunately you're, you're... kissing him does not wake him up no sadly and then uh you are gathering what we only played like a couple of hours so which means we are probably not even out of the tutorial if not barely out of the tutorial i had one person i know who has finished this game tell me it takes seven hours to fully get going okay <laughs> okay so okay great and the thing i will say though that intro bit the part where it is in the wind up you're not doing nothing it's not an endless parade of cutscenes. there isn't like zero interaction that you are really doing like i think it actually gets you into the combat Mm -hmm. and into the basic systems pretty quickly yeah I, i you know it's uh they do have you name yourself as the player not the character in in the beginning there but then you also name your character and then you name the character so i think um i I think alex you had named uh uh yourself larry Mm -hmm. uh and then the character zeke but at the where we stopped the uh video was uh, interesting because there was somebody who's like in this old tome it mentions the ancient name of Larry, <laughs> which was like, and so that's why I picked that because I knew that was coming. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so in the, in the kind of setup there for the game, which is intriguing and is kind of why I want to get into it and play yeah. it. They are this fantasy world, all these different 
races and, and like Alex said, some with pointy ears, <clears throat> some with horns, some with uh, no regular ears, floppy ears, regular ears. Everyone's got weird bowl cuts. It's it's interesting. But then there are these gigantic towering monstrosities put together with limbs and eyeballs and tongues, which are called humans. And they are they are terrorizing. They are the monsters. They are the real monsters. Uh, so say. I, am, I am kind of curious to see what they're going for here. I think what their... they're going for is a metaphor for racism. And <laughs> I don't monsters. think it's a I metaphor. Think that's what it, I think that's it what it is. Yeah. They think it's just straight uh, uh, racism uh, and My... classism, too, in there. Well, I, I, one one detail I will say for the, them deciding to tell their high fantasy tale of just incredible abject racism, it's very funny that they also just dress set dressed everything as extremely British. The yeah, United was, Kingdom of what? It's uh, it's the think. United Kingdom of Ukronia. Everything yeah. is like turn of the century, but like slightly modernized. You know, like 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 <laughs> post Victorian England. You're fucking the first be- like general dude you run into is basically just the fucking chief from Danger Mouse. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's very English in a lot of its set set choices. But then okay, there's yeah, two I, I, dudes I was... against the wall vaping. Yeah, but there's huh. also vape rigs. I don't know what the yeah. fuck that right. is about, but there are. Okay, I mean, that was going to be my question this whole time, is is it, like, fully classical old sword and sorcery, or are there any, like, sci-fi elements, but there's vaping, so you, clearly... You yes. compared it, so Vinny compared it to Eberron, which is the, the universe he and I play D&D in, which is the one where magic, it's, it's sort of steampunky, but it's more like magic punk. Like, it's, all the magic is a utility. It is electricity yeah. in that world. You use it to be, to build devices. And like, that why seems wash to be your what clothes with a, di- with a, with a laundry thing when you could just use magic to do yeah, it? Yeah, right? exactly. Like, like you know, why do you need, uh, you know, like steam engines when you can just have a lightning train, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And so, in this case, there, it seems like the magic is very much a utility in this world. Uh, so yeah, you, uh, that's kind of the setup, and then uh, your uh, Alex was recruiting his his crew there and learning about the systems, which they do. There does seem to be a decent amount to pick up there in the systems, and I don't think I've even gotten through like half of them at this point. So, but I, I'll say presentation wise, uh, your main character does have a voice. Uh, you, mm-hmm. uh, and, doesn't and talk spits, a lot, but he's there. Th- yeah, uh, you got a little uh, uh, kind of Tinkerbell esque uh, person who's is throwing uh, beats into your head uh, soundtrack. Uh, into your mind uh, as you go as kind of uh, uh, DJing the scene. Yeah, which, the music is all diegetic, apparently. Like, weird. literally, your your fairy friend is just, like, literally throwing your fucking, you know, uh, your, 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 your forge steel beats by Dre <laughs> headphones on you, and you are listening to battle music. Also, it's version of the old Persona thing of, like, hey, I'm putting a gun to my head and summoning my Persona <laughs> shit. It, like basically when each character unlocks the thing they tear out their own heart and talk into it it's like a microphone right. yeah. yeah like it's the uh, fucking klf 3 m maternal video okay so this this really is hitting a lot of the persona beats then yeah, like, quite, yeah. quite specifically it's in that neighborhood 100 percent uh you even get the kind of like uh old english style of uh, uh, uh thou uh hast mm. unlock the there know, is whatever. a version of the velvet room but it is not actually that it is like a, a weird magical <laughs> prison for this guy who is basically the leonardo da vinci of this universe i think you know that's a lot of credit there i was gonna say it's definitely more the art student who got locked at college for <laughs> <laughs> for like no he long. looks like that art student 100 <laughs> percent. he looks like art student sephiroth but i'm just saying that like there is literally a giant vitruvian man statue behind him and he has a yeah. thousand books that smell of rich mahogany um and uh uh the soundtrack when you're in battle and i cannot verify this i'm just gonna repeat maybe uh what was told to us at what least. was told to us irresponsibly repeat what was told to us but it is somebody who is just laying down Esperanto tracks uh, underneath this like driving beat in a way that sounds like they just walked it off the street and just started streaming language. Like it's at a literally microphone. like Scatman fucking John, <laughs> like with Esperanto, if it's, it's Esperanto. But it is literally just this guy going <laughs> just like con- over this yeah. battle music. And like escalating in like, you yeah. know, like frenzy, uh, which is like it's a little unnerving in a way. It definitely threw me off balance the first couple of times I heard it. Uh so th- there's that also. Uh-huh. Uh you know, it's the language that will unite us all. Uh if again 
if it's got Esperanto. more than a few people to say that that is what they were going for. So I uh, I have not checked the veracity of it, but I would believe it if it, you know. Maybe I'll have to check it out on my own time. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of metaphor. At least the two hours of it. Uh, yeah, like pretty, three hours. Good. I'm like three hours into it now. Okay, pretty good first impression. Yeah, I, it makes no. me want to get in there. Like I, I I think I still. Here's what I've learned about me and JRPGs. I really like when they apply those kinds of mechanics and 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 systems to modern settings. It's why I like the Persona games. It's why I have sanctioned the shift in the the like a dragon games over to a more turn based like RPG style battle system because there's just something about applying those kinds of stuff to a weird like in like a somewhat grounded real world environment that really works for me. I think a high fantasy version of this is just slightly less interesting to me, mm. but the notes it's hitting at the outset are at least good enough that I'm like getting past that without too much okay. issue. Like I am having fun with it for sure. It seems like they're it's definitely a fantasy setting, but it's it's a little outside enough where it makes me curious to see what their take on this fantasy setting is. Yeah, you know? I think that, I think there's enough going on there that isn't just like generic high fantasy shit that like it it's it's hitting some good notes for me. Uh so you're playing on the PS5. Mm-hmm. Um seems to be it, it, look, it's not a it's not a looker uh, necessarily, but oh, it's it looks sti- nice. but, but style is I mean I should say technically it doesn't yeah. seem like it's a technical looker. It is sharp uh, enough. But it is uh, uh, artistic enough. You know, they put yeah. their, their Atlas style into it. Oh, this is a cross-gen game, actually. This is out on PS4 as well. Yes, yeah. it is. And so I'm curious. I might pick this up on PC to see if um, if it looks any different on there uh, and, and check it out there. But that is a Metaphor Refantasio. Uh, we should also say that this uh, people have estimated this at like one of those 80 to 100 hour uh, uh <laughs> Can't close out the year without one more of those. Right, Wouldn't have expected yeah. anything otherwise, honestly. So I was hoping to maybe knock out Echoes of Wisdom and get that off my plate. I still Not got, a fucking I, chance. I still got uh, Star Wars kind of lingering around back there. I, I think they have patched that up probably as much as they're going to do before I uh, my window to patch it up uh, it closes. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, didn't didn't they set that into like November twenty second deadline? I think isn't that what that statement to investors said that they're going to kind of like soft relaunch it. Prior to the oh, holidays. is that right? I might have forgotten that. I thought there was that patch that came out recently, right? To performance wise. Oh, maybe I don't that's, know. Maybe that's I've the been, rebalancing stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've been super unplugged from current events, but I'd, I'd have to go check. But I, I'd swear that investor messaging said like they, they're giving themselves until X dates okay. to kind of re, not redo it. You know, you know what I mean? Like yeah, kind of yeah. clean it up and like quote unquote repos- you know, kind of reposition it for the holidays and make a second push on it. Uh, you might be right. I have to double check. I, you know, I've, I'm, I'm past the beginning stuff now where I just kind of want to get deeper in and see what's going on there. And, but again, another time investment thing. Uh, so these, these smaller games, and I thought Echoes of Wisdom might be smaller, but it's soaking up a little bit of time there. Yeah. I, I just checked. It's like, it's like 20 hours kind of main okay. story. I, I might I be saw. near the end of it then actually. Uh, I think we'll see if they pop up a whole new dungeon there, but I have most of the map unlocked. So can't be too too much more i don't think i'm gonna like 100 percent it and get every heart piece i think those are the games for right now yeah uh, I, I i could mention very quickly i have been playing some bellatro on mobile uh-huh as have i on the iphone oh, have you guys talked about that already no not really i mean it's um, other than to say i have been playing it and it is now another way for that game to consume my life yeah um i kind of just assumed before it came out that touch like touchscreen mobile ipad would be the best way to play that game i'm not sure though mm-hmm. because mm. To get the contextual information for cards, you have to tap and hold on them versus like, I've never played that game with a mouse. I've only played it with a controller uh, outside of mobile, but you can, you move the cursor or or you you move your card selection around. Right. And like it pops the, you know, card value, whatever, uh, like special abilities that given card has, like that information pops up as fast as you can move the cursor around. Mm -hmm. And then on the iPad, you know, like if you want to see what's up with a card, you have to like kind of press on it for a second. So it's actually feels a little slower to play Mm -hmm. it on mobile so far to me. To, uh, for that reason um also i mean you, you may have discussed it by now but like the the dream of the one-handed vertical phone <laughs> mode no is, is definitely dead it's full-on just you know horizontal orientation pc style oh yeah okay okay like like you like you you have to turn your phone sideways and play it in the okay. same kind of ui as you would on a pc or console yeah, um, I, I I will say this. I I think that what they d- ended up doing with the UI is probably about as good as that game could play on a tiny device. Like, yeah, you can it's, see it's everything. Fine. The information is delivered reasonably well. Everything's pretty snappy. 
Yeah, it's fine. Like they, they, instead of like button prompts for confirming like purchases and selling cards and stuff, you kind of drag them into a zone. Like you start dragging a card and like a little cell zone will appear and you kind of drag it in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the interface is fine. I'm not, I don't, I'm not complaining about it at all. It's just a little different. It's a little something to get used to if you're coming from a different platform. Um, Also, I, I was playing it when the cell network was like barely working here. So I don't know that I can blame the game, but it was not syncing my progress between phone and tablet super well at first mm-hmm. mm. seems like that finally has happened but i've re- i read you can in- inadvertently sync your like worst progress over your better progress if you're not careful Ooh, okay that like danger yeah i saw that happening to some people so but but whatever it's it's 10 bucks and like blotro might be the best game this year so uh, i need to play I'd say there's no it. might about it, it honestly is, oh, it, wow. is, it is a it is a fine way to play that game like i i probably am going to shift to ipad as the main place to play that game uh I know we got well, this rise of the golden idol in uh, in November. So uh, I I was trying to think of like m- what I've played this year that um, has really struck me out because I have not latched on to Bellatro, but I j- I should play more of it. I should try some more. I think Lorelei might still be up there for me in in games that I really really enjoyed this year. I, that does not surprise me considering how excited you were about it. <laughs> yeah, I've got got myself a uh, 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 a little too excited about Lorelei. No, it's not. I didn't ex- say too just excited. Ex- just just you, excited you like enough. it. Uh, the thing I also want to try and I'll probably jump into this Thursday on a stream is I will uh, probably boot up that Silent Hill 2 remake, which, uh, um, mm-hmm. people seem to enjoy. Yeah. It. Am I, am I to understand that people actually love that thing? Which is like after, a lot for Silent Hill fans uh, after doing nothing but shitting on it for months. I mean, it's, I've, I've read criticisms about some of the things they do in it. And you know, some of the people who were playing it that, that definitely were expecting the worst from that <laughs> game were like, yeah, some of the stuff isn't, is definitely what I was worried about. But even those people are saying, by and large, it feels like they hit the right notes with this thing. I feel like even the biggest bloober haters that I know <laughs> are saying, I think they did more good than bad in this. All right. Um, Hope springs eternal. Yeah. Totally. Uh, and maybe, maybe I'll look at that uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Uh, another uh, another fine entry in the Dragon Ball verse. Finally, because you're going to know what happens to Goku. Finally, uh, maybe it's time for another check in there, but yeah, metaphor is probably the one that I, I saw that I was like, you know what? I think I could get into this. This could be a, a, a thing I could, uh, put some time into. Yeah. I'm going to keep playing that for sure. All right. I think those are the games for now. We'll see what happens next week. Um, end of the month. We also have that dragon age, uh, Valgar, the Valgard, uh, coming out. So I don't know if I need to clear some room on the plate there. Uh, for for God, some that is age. soon, isn't it? Yeah, just get through uh, metaphor and uh, uh, yeah, I'll just bang another... that thing out. Yeah. God, I feel for any reviewer that is currently in, <laughs> on in that RPG beat. beat right now because <laughs> yeah. you are feasting, and by feasting, I mean it's like that bit in the Treehouse of Horror where they just keep feeding donuts to Homer. Let, let's let's hope that uh, the publishers are getting code out early, uh, early enough to people who are. Still I don't think there is early beat. enough in this case. Yeah, maybe maybe not, maybe not. All right, we're going to take another break here. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about some news, the emails, and, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and uh, wrap this one up. Uh, so stick around. We'll be right back. All right, and we are back with some news. Now, Brad, I feel like you've been, uh, you've been kind of out of it, for better or worse. Yeah, we're from, on uh, about day five of internet and phone being fully back. Yeah. Uh, did you catch anything? And again, this is, we're, we're going to cover this in a way that is like kind of all over the place, but none of us are really big Pokemon fans, but have you co- seen the game? Let's see the freak leak, the terror. Yes. Leak? Yes. The freak leak. It, it does sound like a freaky leak. From mm-hmm. My understanding Pokemon uh, sex is involved. Is that uh-huh. correct? <laughs> so the, the, what again, else is new? So, in complete transparency here though you probably don't need us to say it we are not the biggest pokemon lore people nor i think have any of us really gotten that excited over a new pokemon game you have to Uh, understand every single one of us is just over the line of when we would have been like enjoying pokemon as a child we are just we were just a little too old when that thing was hitting I uh look, I've enjoyed a Pokemon game, but uh, I am not a. But you're I, not a fan. There's a, we are not uh, yeah. in the fandom, is what we're saying. Dude, when uh, when did the first game come out? Actually, now I would need to know. 1996. Uh, 90s, wasn't it? Is that what I'm seeing? 1996. That sounds no, right. Is it not earlier than that? The first the the G, first Game Boy game. Uh, well, the yeah, animated was. series we're, was 97. Uh yeah yeah it was um, Red and Blue came out in 96. 
Dang. Okay. Yeah, I was 15. So I, was, I was past my pocket monster collecting stage of my life. Yeah, I was senior year of high school. Then. I was heading to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do remember it being all over Nintendo Power. Oh, it, was yeah. a, it was a huge deal. So. Oh, yeah. In fact, we talked about it on the Ramblecast some. Uh, the box, the box of 1998 E3 press materials that I had that got waterlogged. A whole lot of Nintendo press releases about Pokemon in there. Like half of the Nintendo press kit from E3 98 was about Pokemon. So the uh, uh, Game Freaks, the kind of uh, one of the pillars in the in the Pokemon franchise. You got Nintendo, you got Game Freaks, and I forget the third um, uh, something creation creatures. Uh, there's a third company involved. You're talking there. About, oh, the Pokemon company is the other pillar of the pokemon mm-hmm. is that what you mean uh no there's i'm thinking of the one that uh, creatures inc who do the trading game card game uh, oh, oh i see yeah. what you mean um yeah, and game freak does the just the video games the right? video game stuff and they got they got hacked and they got hacked pretty rough uh so not to make light of it but they sounds like a, about a terabyte of information got pulled out of there including a lot of personal employee stuff uh seems to be out there as of us talking about this people are still going through uh some of that leaked material but it sounds like um some of the reporting out there and some of the statement from game freak says uh uh, over 2600 items of personal data which which is a lot uh and in addition to that the thing that is probably stirring up or what i see floating across uh, continuously are the Amounts of cuts or unreleased or uh, support unused. materials, unused materials around the Pokemon universe. Now, let's also just say there wasn't too much, or at least reported out there now, of upcoming Pokemon stuff. There was a little bit of stuff uh, talking about released for the Switch 2 or whatever the, the future Switch is and, and it, its regards to the Pokemon franchise. Yeah, it sounds like this this headline on Polygon. The next gen of Pokemon may be coming to Switch 2 and the OG Switch is what this says. Yeah, which, uh, you know, might be some insight. I think, Brad, you mentioned when we were talking about this offline about maybe Nintendo's plans for releasing stuff yeah. in, in the future. Yeah, because, I mean, A, Nintendo was weird and everything they do is like you never know what stance they're going to take on stuff. And also, B, we're just in this era now where like games run across multiple consoles. So, like, I at least am desperate to know, like, What's going to happen to original Switch games? Will they be better on the Switch 2? Are they going to be making games that are cross-platform, or will they just shift straight to Switch 2 exclusive development? You know what I mean? There's like a lot yeah. of like parameters to hammer out about how the Switch 2 is going to work. So like, either this is an outlier, and it's just, hey, Pokemon is way too big to constrain to just the next Switch. We've got to sell to the 150 million Switches that are already out there, mm-hmm. or, or maybe all of their development is going to be cross-Switch for some time. I don't know. Uh. Either either way, uh, it still seems like people are going through some of these materials and nothing. And these are leaked materials, so this is, we should reiterate. And people listening to this are smart enough to know these are not official statements or, or no. uh, official stances of of anything. Or it doesn't mean that what that was leaked is going to happen. So uh, uh, the Game Freak has said, uh, "quote." Uh, results of unauthorized access to our servers by a third party. I don't think as of the time we're kind of talking about this, that anyone has actually, a group has claimed responsibility for the hack, though uh, it sounds like maybe this stuff started bubbling up on 4chan or originally, or was it originally oh, good. Uh, um, uh, announced there, though, you know, this stuff is kind of all over now. Um, yeah, no, it got uh, everywhere very fast. And... In a kind of weird way, it's exposing some of the process that goes into making some of these games that maybe some fans are having uh, 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 reactions to that uh, are changing their minds on their beloved franchise. I don't know. Some folks, some fans out there uh, mm-hmm. seem to be taken aback at some of the source materials that were either generated or not used or, or put th- spaghetti yeah. on the wall. Don't want to see the spaghetti on the wall for Pokemon. Yeah. I, um, I wanted to follow up on the thing I mentioned earlier about, you know, I wanted to find out more about some of the more salacious d- yeah. data uncovered in this. So I went and typed Pokemon sex into Google Oh, I'd never do that. And let me just tell you, <laughs> what I got back were a bunch of links that I don't think you can open legally in North Carolina. No. Um, <laughs> but but I, here here I do have a uh, a Forbes article. Uh, some of some of the some of the writing that they've uncovered from this uh, describes cruelty, sex, and sadism. Uh-huh. Is how this story puts it. 
so like it's it came off to me in looking some of this stuff up and again i'm i haven't read the source materials but uh reading some of the reporting on it and description of it sounds like some of the uh creation myth and the creation tales in the pokemon universe had been um generated i don't know what the right language here to use is because this is all leaked material that wasn't used in the in the actual game but you know you generate stuff it sounded a lot more like actual old human creation myths that have a lot of really messed up stuff going on of, yeah. uh, you know like you can go back to any kind of culture's creation myth and it's usually not too pretty with some of the uh uh sexual stuff going on the no abuse nobody's of power gods going were up on. to anything good really <laughs> yeah kratos had it right just destroy all gods uh yeah. but in this case this is a, a a piece of video game fiction that uh presents itself as a very kid-friendly front that has some materials that were not intended to be released. Again, I should say that explicitly, uh, that maybe painted a different picture than what was presented. How do you guys feel about a gnarly creation myth of, you don't want to know, you don't, you, some, you sometimes you just don't want to know. Yeah. You don't want to know. No, I look, this just feels like stuff that was just lying around somewhere. Like, this is not stuff that was, like, imminently going to show up in one of these games. It's stuff that some people who work there wrote maybe got a little out of pocket with it, you know? Or contracted like, out. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, or contracted out. Whatever it is, it, it's, yeah, it's weird, and, and some of it is is definitely, like, I definitely would not expect this to ever appear in a children's <laughs> franchise, but... That's all it is, is just stuff that's lying around. Like, none of this is, like, you know, interesting development materials about what's coming in the next game. It's just stuff. And if people went looking around, you know, fucking the shelves and, you know, plastic bins in my basement, they would find <laughs> probably some other stuff that I had that I forgot that I had that also might include some writing that I wrote about some bullshit that I don't care about anymore, you know? Like, it's just stuff. Yeah. Fr frankly, there are some... Th some threads that I have gone, uh, uh, seen brought up that I wouldn't mind exploring more in this Pokemon universe about Pokemon and humans in ancient times. I mean, uh, if, kind if of only just to kind of crack the shell on yeah. that thing a little bit <laughs> and maybe just let it grow somewhere. You know what? 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 This is a weird world. How did we get here? And I'm sure there was some worship and some myth mythologizing and, and some weird stuff going on. Uh, in, humans, in, in, humans, and Pokemon used to mate, is what my understanding. You know, it's look that would happen. To Were Pokemon's <laughs> Denisovans? Is that what this is? I, we we who can say for sure? It's not the published texts. Okay, uh. these are the Dead Sea Scrolls of of the Pokemon lore. <laughs> were, were there were there two of you of every Pokemon on the Ark? No, there were sometimes maybe there were four or five. That's depends what your what your what your thing is. What kind of party uh, you're having? But yeah, uh, that's uh, that's been circulating around. That's kind of a big, obviously, uh, you know, the personal information getting out there truly sucks. Uh, and, and yeah, no, that's the stuff that is like yeah, actually the headline here is that hey, a whole bunch of fucking developers just got their shit stolen. Um, and uh, illegal uh, access to your uh, systems obviously yeah. sucks. Uh, but, uh, you know, people kind of losing it in some, in some regard, it's the internet. They lose it over everything over, uh, uh, the expanded unit Pokemon universe, uh, seems to Buddy be. Buddy has now, has it been expanded now? It's been pretty expanded. Maybe they bring some of the weird stuff in. I don't know. Uh, we are, again, we are, uh, talking about this from an outsider's point of view, because I actually don't know. There's much more detail in there about stuff that was cut from actual games. Um, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me when, it, even when I read it being like, I, if this takes place 14 years before when it took place, is that a big deal? I don't know if that, that's not for me. That's for your Pokemon cast. That's for you to go find somewhere else. Not here. No. Uh, Moving on, we talked a little bit about this somewhere. It's been a, it's been uh, it's been a bit of a whirlwind in trying to remember what's been going on. I don't know if we talked explicitly about stuff getting batted around about legislation saying in I think it was in California about hey you need to explicitly say when you are buying a license for a game versus having complete ownership over mm -hmm. your purchase for a game. Brad Shoemaker seems like Steam is trying to get ahead of some of this stuff. Yeah, I think they, did they pass that law in California? Like, I think maybe right before I left town or something like that. I can't remember when we talked about it. Late September uh, is maybe when that law got signed. But yeah, like it's becoming more of a pressing 
concern now that you're starting to see companies actually revoking the license that you have bought for digital goods. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's happened in video games yet, has it? Well, things. Some of this, I they'll get delisted. May- Delisted. Yeah, some, some of these may have uh, been associated with the movement to have transparency or some alternate means when a game server goes offline. After you bought right. a thing and it becomes unplayable because a server's gone offline. Right. Uh, like the the standard the standard in games generally has been like it may it may go off of the storefront, meaning you know you can no longer buy it, but you can always yeah. still download and play it. Well, but well, but play like, is maybe doing a little. Well, work but there. yes, when yeah, yeah then, then they get into weird gray area that I'm sure they have covered their asses for in the user license agreements of something something but but you know like this has happened in in movies quite a bit like sony did this last year or was it the year before remember sony straight up yanked a bunch of movies and tv shows that people had bought from their service where you couldn't even watch them anymore i don't remember that i do remember that full on you no longer have any access to this content that you paid for Uh, i don't think we've crossed that bridge in video games yet but it seems like this kind of legislation is just getting more important now that it seems like physical media is basically done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it seems you tell me, but it seems like the writing is on the, on the wall at this point that there, there probably will always be a little bit of boutique physical media mm-hmm. here and there for people who want it. Yeah. But absolutely not for every release. Yeah. Like it seems like we are, it seems like we are barreling toward the all digital future where there's, you're just not going to have a choice soon. I mean, and video so they, games are definitely at the vanguard of that compared to other mediums. Well, like, is you know, music is music there already? Yes. No, oh, yeah, well, no, absolutely. It, it, well, they are and they're not though. But, like, it is you're, on the vinyl side of things that is absolutely all just like boutique shit. But like, yeah. they do still make CDs but for the, a lot for of the everything. biggest artists. Yeah, oh, but not not okay. there are there are definitely albums coming out without physical CD releases yes. now. But they okay. are not. It is. It is not in totality. And movies, like, there's still more. There's still enough demand right now for that stuff to exist on physical. But you know, it is still heading trending in that direction. But video games feel like they are going to be the first ones to completely eliminate that concept. Video games seem like somewhere between to me, and I, I'm a little bit of a layman on this. They seem, but music being the tip of the spear, movies being a little behind because there's still a quality issue. I think on on Blu-ray, and uh, you could still just get a better quality thing on a disc than you can on streaming. And video games somewhere in the middle of um, look, you're kind of downloading this data. It's a similar product that you have locally it's a more of a delivery mechanism so somewhere in the middle but the trend being like look you don't have to take my word for it go look at any physical game retailer they will echo yeah, this uh, and the numbers i mean the sales data is always incomplete but the numbers that we do get coming out are starting to show like you know 80 90 percent of a publisher sales are digital now yeah so we're we're headed in that direction anyway the, the development here is that steam has now started denoting the nature of your purchase uh, kind of at point of sale uh, I had the, let's see, the language is a purchase of a digital product grants a license for the product on Steam. I'm not sure. You tell me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's quite explicit enough for my taste. It took like, me in the screenshot. It took me like a bit to find what the new thing was. Right. Like, like, like we know what that means, but we live in this world, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know if the average consumer necessarily, I don't know if that jumps out at people and tells the average consumer like, like, hey, you're just paying for the right to play this, and we could yank that at any time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, it still will probably point you. And I think in this screenshot, I saw, um, you know, full terms and conditions. Go read the stream Steam subscriber agreement. I bet it is not. I haven't looked at it myself personally, but I would bet dollars to donuts it is not in the kind of uh, very readable sense that, like, hey, you don't own this. I bet it is right. a lot of uh, lawyer speak, or you know, this purchase constitutes a whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, like I feel like even even just slightly tweaking a purchase of a, of a digital product only grants a license for the product on Steam. Yeah, right. Even that kind of drives the point home a little bit better. But I mean, Valve's probably the last company on earth who would render your Steam your games unplayable from their library. You know, mm-hmm. I would. Okay, I'm not trying to support any other company over any other. I would maybe say uh, uh, Gog might be. Mm, okay, uh, sure. Gog, Gog yes. feels like one of the. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Like Valve. Valve is consumer oriented in a way that they just know it's smart business. Gog yeah. has turned it into an ideological crusade. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. They. They. They might be. But who knows? You know. The, that's the problem, right? It's you are putting your faith in. Yeah. Uh, a company's bottom line to be able to support that, for, and when it doesn't make financial sense, you run a risk of not supporting it. Yeah, but it, it just seems like like more more explicit messaging to consumers is just going to get more important as we start losing even more physical releases of just making people understand like, hey, you don't you're not going to permanently own this potentially. Like there is a chance five years from now 
you will no longer have access to the thing you were paying for today. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think this steam change really will have much effect, uh, in the public consciousness, you know, like, I don't think it'll rally people to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought I was buying this. Wait, what do you mean? I'm only getting a license. I'm not going to spend my dollar here then. But no, um, but th- this is very much just like we are trying to placate, you know, the people who are savvy about this sort of thing and still manage to obfuscate this enough. So the average person still has no idea what's going on. Yeah. That, yes. Yeah. This is, this is not enough really. Like, I mean, what we really need is legislation around compelling companies to make good on, your purchases if they take away your access to the content in some way you know yeah and that was what that whole movement around the crew i think it was the crew uh about a servers going offline and and that that kind of petition to try uh to have some kind of legislation say if you are going to do this and somebody paid money for this they need to be either a means to off-ramp people like hey release code for the server so the public can run it or some kind of make good for a product you can you bought and can no longer play anymore yeah as always piracy and homebrew remain the only real archiving service out there Mm -hmm. you know people people spinning up like uh, custom servers or or homebrew servers for games that go offline stuff like that yeah but i'm i was trying to see when uh and it's a little hard to parse here in the bill text, but that bill, that California bill, when it's supposed to go into effect for any penalties, um, because it was passed, but I cannot quickly see when people have to make good on the language. But it is one of those things where if California passes it, then instead of having multiple storefronts, you're probably going to see this happen across yeah. all storefronts. Yeah. Uh, same like with cars. You follow the California emission standards because what are you going to make? Two cars? Right. Mm-hmm. Probably. But yeah, yeah. Hopefully this is a step on the way to more solid and comprehensive consumer protections around losing access to your digital goods. Yeah, I do wonder, not to kind of belabor the um, the issue here, but I do wonder as, you know, in the United States here, things will change on pace with what's happening in what feels like the EU maybe having a, a, a kind of more aggressive stance on some of those things uh, and playing catch up a lot to their legislation. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. Just like the EU got us USB-C in our phones. Uh-huh. And now they will get our digital goods protected. Please save and the, us. And uh, I, I could be mistaken here, but I want to say things like um, being able to explicitly stop cookies from automatically be, or to opt into reject yeah. all or uh, uh, yes, accept um, all cookies. It was a GD, GDPR, wasn't yes. it? was the mm-hmm. thing that requires you to be able to delete your data, which every website on earth just loved having to implement. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, look, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy, but it's right. That's why it's no one easy, does it, right. because it's not easy. It's until not they easy. have to. Until they have to. Hey, uh, that probably also employed a lot of people <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to go in there and a lot of programmers to go For in there. For a little while. Com- yeah. Compliant. Uh, all right, so that's what's happening in Steam. That'll probably happen, I would suspect, across the board here as we kind of move forward, um, and especially if it's just a matter of having a little button change that says you purchase a license. Uh, okay. Finally here, a bit of, uh, uh, Alarmo news that, um, uh, <laughs> this week's feel good story. The Alarmos were ringing, uh, as Nintendo is at it again, uh, mm-hmm. trying to find another market. So uh, Nintendo, uh, has their museum open, uh, yeah. uh it, it's functioning. They're selling a bunch of stuff. Uh, I saw a watch Dan Reichert's trip there where he came back with like a suitcase full of old games and stuff that he's seemed to have gotten at a ridiculous Uh-oh. price. Oh, he's become part of the problem. Uh, yes, maybe. He is. Well, no, he's he's probably buying those games to play them. Unlike, maybe. Uh, unlike he's not, the many he's people. not playing them to seal them up in plastic, if that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah well, that's not what I he's going to do. I mean, the people who were part of the problem were the people raiding those stores and buying up all those games and then flipping, flipping them uh, on eBay right. for 10 times the price. That's not what he's doing. Look, I have to ask Dan personally. I'm not going to make any assumptions one way or the other, but he did seem to have showcase his stuff, and I was like, damn, really? You could yeah. get all that for that amount over there what? what that's a sealed copy of super mario brothers 3 that's, so that's ridiculous yeah, um, i don't know how it is now but like the last time i was there you could get crazy cheap stuff yeah. for like i bought i think i bought my super famicom for like the equivalent of eight dollars roughly i mean granted that was quite a while ago um that wasn't from the museum though that was just in, in japan no, that was just a, a uh, nice used one 
But uh, Nintendo has a new piece of hardware here, and it's not a Switch 2. Brad, what is it? Can we can we just pause on the name Alarmo? Alarmo. Can like if Alarmo. This is, the, <laughs> is this their could this just be their naming convention going forward? Just call it what it is with an O on the end. In uh, the grand uh, in the in the grand tradition of Labo. Switcho. Comes Alarmo. Alarmo. Watcho. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo made an alarm clock. Not just an alarm clock. What an alarm clock. I and mean, it's some kind of interactive alarm. An alarm clock you have to spend more money on than a regular <laughs> alarm clock. It's $100, in fact. And it has DLC coming. Uh, did they, I watched the video for it. Are they going to charge for the DLC? No, it said, I'm, I'm pretty sure, didn't they say explicitly free updates? I thought they did. I thought they did in the video, they said. Uh, and you'll be getting, because uh, it, okay, so the alarm clock is themes, has themes on it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, uh, themes like Mario, uh, which you would expect. So it's, it's a weird selection. It's Mario, it's, is it Odyssey? I think it's Odyssey. Yes, because it's got the New Donk City song in it. It's yeah. Odyssey, Pikmin 4. Yeah. Uh, Splatoon. Yeah, Splatoon 3 particularly. Uh, yeah. Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And then Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> yep. Like yep. if you've only got five Nintendo games and you add and you put ring fit in, that's a weird one. I don't know. Look, I think this is part, if I had to guess, somebody was like, this is part of our lifestyle brand. Yeah. So you're, you're actually, yes, you're not well, wrong. And ring, ring fit adventure was huge. Also, it is part of their lifestyle brand, but like of all the things that they have done that are lifestyle brand products, this is the most Spencer's gifts ass <laughs> thing I have seen them do in a long fucking time. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm all for it as someone who's not going to buy one of these things. I just think it's dumb in a fun way. So, so f- some of the features again, and this is I, this is mostly from the video. Uh, I have not seen one of these in person. Um, that they are promoting is uh, it can sense when you are in bed tossing and turning, and when you get out of range yeah, of this thing. So it's got a it's got a motion sensor. So when your alarm is going off in the morning and you move around, it starts making like coin sounds. Or if you're using the Mario theme, or if you've selected the Splatoon sound, you hear a bunch of goo splattering <laughs> everywhere as you move around, which is definitely exactly what I want to hear first thing in the morning. Yeah, uh, and and it kind of. Uh, ramps intensity up and uh, gives you a little cheer when you finally have uh, woken up and uh, yeah. stretch your arms out like a cartoon character with your nightcap on. And yeah. yeah, I yeah, have woken yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, and then when you get out of bed, it kind of turns off because it, it lo- once I it seems like when it loses track of you, it, it assumes yeah. you are no longer n- needing to be woken up. Plays you a fanfare when you get up. Can yeah. I? It's got it's got record keeping. You know, it's got some other features but yeah i i have a thing i just need to braise here because yeah. I, I i'm sure i'm maybe thinking in a short-sighted way about this does any human being on earth now still need an actual alarm clock okay now if you're asking because you just use your phone for your alarm that's clock, my answer yeah. yes i do not bring my phone into the bedroom uh my phone stays uh in a dock in the uh charging unit at home my iPad is in the bedroom and I use that as an alarm clock. Okay. So, so okay. But you took me on a journey just to get to the same place, but okay, that's fine. Uh, but, but I do have, I, but I do actually have an old school, uh, alarm clock that I would use if I didn't use my iPad, which is just too convenient to use. It is. Okay. Yeah, it is. It is there. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little mad at you now <laughs> that you took me all that way just to come uh, back to an iPad. If I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've still got the same clock radio that I moved to California with. So do you use it for an alarm clock or do you just yeah. use your phone? Or, yeah. Okay. No, I typically do not bring any mobile, dev- except my Kindle. Okay. I kind of I kind of made a zero tolerance, like no, yeah. Good for no you. mobile devices by no the screen. bed yeah. no, policy, no, no, and I'm yeah. pretty sure I sleep better for it. But that's my yeah. point, though, right? Is that you have that clock because you've had that clock. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. It is starting to crap out after 20 plus years, and I yeah. have been very much questioning... Should I get another clock? I'm not actually not sure. Are you the Alarmo test case? Are you the reason that they are making this thing? Hmm. Well, let me ask you, Brad. It, let's ask this question: If you're if you woke up tomorrow and saw your alarm clock were dead, would you just replace it with a similar one? I don't know. I, I assume alarm clock technology has gotten pretty cool in the last twenty years. Yeah. It, I, so I let me just stop you there because. I want the least complicated alarm clock mm, there. It needs to do its job. And that is to wake me up. And if anything goes wrong with it, this is no why I have, this is why I use the uh, iPad. I belt and suspenders. My alarm, I will set my alarm clock. And I do this on work trips as well. When I'm at a hotel, I will set the alarm on my phone and yes. the, and the hotel room and the wake up service. I, I, yeah. I do the exact same thing for flights. I absolutely double up on alarms for yeah. those. 
Uh, so I, this is more Alex. I th- let's reframe the question a bit. Uh, my son saw this and he was like, that's cool. And my son doesn't have a phone or anything like that. He also has us to wake him up, but uh-huh. it's, it's not, I don't think it's about the utility of it. I think it is more about the goofiness gadgetness of it yeah. uh, than, than actual use of an alarm clock is my sense of the thing. Like, okay. do you need this to wake you up? No, but like. Are people going to be like this? I used this thing for a month and then yeah. I, I just turned it off. Well, let me let me pr- pose a follow up question yeah. here for you and, and and your son in this particular case. Does your son have a hundred dollars? He's got holidays. Like, where is like, he going to ask for an alarm clock for a fucking Christmas present or a Hanukkah present? He shouldn't. Right. Because that would be a that would be a bad choice for a child to ask it. for. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, he's not like we talked about it. And I said, "Would you ask for this for a gift?" And he said, "No." Yeah, uh, and it, it it does not appeal to him. But he did say like, "Oh, that's neat." Uh, but then I was like, "Would you want one?" He's like, "No, not really." Uh, no, because you know who this is actually for. I think I do. It's for Dan. Well, it's for Dan, but it is specifically for people who are of the Dan archetype, which is to yeah. say people who buy various video game bric-a-brac that they have no intention of ever using, but sh- sure will make a great display item in their streaming setup. Uh, so I was going to, I'll take that a step further, and I can absolutely imagine if this world is still around in 30 to 40 years, somebody going like, oh my God, he's got the Alarmo on his shelf. Like, oh, it's right next to a sealed copy of Super Mario Brothers 3, the the mm-hmm. Nintendo's player guide. And is that a fucking, that's a cup from a Pizza Hut with Mario on it. And he even has the Alarmo there, which is, that's amazing. Yes, that's and the person this, who's saying that is the bandit who has just caved in your skull and is going through <laughs> your stuff as they p- pick through the wasteland. <laughs> as, as they are knee deep in my intestines. Uh-huh. Go, oh my God, who's an Alarmo? I've got this 9.5, like, graded copy. <laughs> copy of super mario 64 in this alarmo this is great blood for the blood god <laughs> i can trade this for 300 caps <laughs> that's right dude we're here just for the insulin and the caps just gonna mm-hmm. just leave the- but it's an alarmo <laughs> um yeah i don't know nintendo makes one of these every couple of years right yeah, yeah there's is- a thing there's always yeah. a thing yeah and you know and remember especially post mario movie being a billion dollar thing or whatever yeah. like mm. there's that whole push i mean they've didn't they establish a whole new wing of the con- company to like aggressively monetize their IP. I, I believe wasn't there was, there was, there was like a push on the corporate side of like, I hey, remember we're going something to, about that. We are going to start making a lot more money on this priceless, uh, intellectual property that we own. Like we're, I think like they are basically going to be a lot more Disney like than they have been already. But like Nintendo, uh, what the Nintendo, you and I, and all of us probably listen to this grew up with. Was that they, Mar- yeah, Mario yeah. was on everything. Yeah. You're Mar- not wrong. The, pencil cases, school backpacks, like, they're like Mo- Nintendo has been putting their product on a lot of things forever, uh, forever. And like again, we've gotten a bunch of these kinds of things. I feel like uh, what the uh, remote controlled Mario cars. Remember those the 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 cars, oh, yeah. the, the, yeah. the 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 toys, the oh, Lego, the Caro, <laughs> yeah, and mm-hmm. Lego Mario. Um, those um, you know. This is just another one of these. This isn't that big a deal. It's yeah, just kind of funny. Yeah. It's 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 dumb. So no interest, huh? Yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, I looked. I thought for half a second, ah, oh, that'd be kind of fun to have around, but no. Yeah. Um. I I didn't see it, but it didn't seem like you can slam that really slammable yeah. looking knob at the top. Yeah. Um. It's like a it's a dial that you can change the settings on, but it looked like a thing you just like wham. Yeah. It's like it's that. like comical. It's like something out of Roger Rabbit or something. It's like yeah. a comically huge thing on top of the alarm. You should be able to smack that thing, but. I would much rather have like a coin block alarm clock that you could just punch <laughs> punch across yeah. the room and have it make mm-hmm. coin sounds uh, when you uh, when you don't want to actually wake up. Well, Nintendo's at it again. Uh, finally, the hardware everybody was waiting for. Yeah, uh, it's it's also just a neat looking device, kind of honestly. You know, it's like it's, it's neat to see somebody like Nintendo throw some high technology at something as mundane as an alarm clock. You know, like it's got that it's got that round black screen, and I yeah. bet most of that is not screen. But now that OLEDs are a thing, you can just like. Mm. have a black bezel and make it all look like a giant round screen. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's got motion sensor and stuff. Like it's, it looks like a nicely designed product, but uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't need anything watching me sleep. That's like, yeah. uh, it's, and I know not it's not even supposed Miyamoto? to be keeping, 
<laughs> okay, there's one Because all person. those Alarmos, they're feeding right back to <laughs> his <laughs> fucking master control system. He is watching all of you sleep. If you were to replace this screen with just a cropped Miyamoto face, just eyes and but up to his live. nose. But it's, it's live. It's him watching yeah. you, and he is commenting on you sleeping. <laughs> no, just smiling. Just smiling. Mm-hmm. To, then I'm back in, maybe. Can we, can we bring Charles Martinet back into service? Uh, that's yeah, easy, he's not yeah. doing anything. You just spin the dial and you get him. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, can we turn the fucking alarm clock around, please? Oh, 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 what the hap- <laughs> What happened? Uh, alarm. Oh, see this, Chuck. One hundred dollars. It's a morning. <laughs> Wake up. Uh, all right. That's the news. Uh, some other stuff out there, but uh, it's like nice and nice to leave it on an alarm. Let's leave yeah. it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Brad, we have had a couple of episodes here where we have not had any emails. Oh, okay. Well, uh, and people have been sending those emails into podcasts at nextlander.com. Yeah, you're, you're in luck. We've got a crop of them here. What do you got? Uh, we'll start with a question from Alice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I won't, I won't read her email address, but it actually ties into the subject of the email quite closely. Okay. Uh, whenever Vinny talks about his daughter and how Alex thinks she's going to become a goth kid. Mm-hmm. Is there a second path where she doesn't get into the macabre and instead becomes Enid for, or I'm sorry, no, I, I read that wrong, where she doesn't get into the macabre and becomes Enid from Ghost World mm. or a Daria? What do you think the non-goth path is for the likely goth girl? I hope I didn't mangle that enough that that made sense. No, that made perfect sense. Like, where does a goth go when the actual goth subculture does not directly appeal to what is clearly their personality type? Hmm. Uh, the answer to that question, other than as the sardonic nerdy girl who is just smarter than everyone, which you can be a goth and be that as well. Uh, and that's the, to be clear, that's the Daria. That's the Daria type. Yes. As, as someone who has been in a relationship with a Daria type for going on 15 (laughs) years now, uh, you know, they're still goth adjacent is the thing. Like they are, they are usually still in that same social sphere, whether they are way into cradle of filth or not does not matter. They usually Uh dress similarly and share similar interests. But beyond that, I don't really know because I kind of feel like a world weary sarcasm has a limited number of places you can put it in a like traditional, let's just say, you know, junior high, high school social order. Maybe that has changed in recent in in the last Uh decade or two since I've been in school, but I still feel like a disaffected kind of. Yeah. Where uh, did the disaffected go if not uh, into those scenes? And I assume the answer is online and bad forums. mm, Well, could you? Could you could you do like a, a Janine Garofalo kind of a, a, a comedy get, get into the comedy side? Oh of yeah, it, or is it, but that's still that's you're still in that general in archetype, you know. Like it's just yeah. you're you're making a profession out of it. There, <laughs> you're just trying to make a buck off of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, look, here's the thing: whether or not she is full goth, mm. she she seems like she likes some of the things that are adjacent to it. And she will find her own way through that. Whether she starts wearing, you know, nothing but black and listening to the worst fucking metal you've ever heard in your life, or just, you know, has kind of a slightly dark aura wherever Uh there is a spectrum there and wherever she lands on it, it will be where she finds her path. And that is great. That said, spiritually, she's still a goth, no matter what. (laughs) (laughs) And then I love her for it. And I'm here to support it. No, I am too. If she, if, if ever she needs, you know, advice, on what to do with your disaffection in junior high school i might be able to help her which is very funny because my son is like the most uh uh like people person he, like, he is a he's, oh, a, he's bubbly, a charmer he's a bubbly people person mm-hmm. who just wants to like be around people and it's like this is great they're all having fun here right yeah lovable goof uh, yeah lovable goof and she is just like your fun is my misery <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, that's like, the thing is you need that balance though yes. right like you need that counterbalance because if you have two goth children that just uh, that 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 really affects the entire household brad shoemaker any more emails mm-hmm. yeah uh jose from puerto, puerto rico uh, i was watching giant bomb infinite and there was an episode of dynasty warriors gundam from april 2009 okay uh, in which Vinny shared a story where uh, a past girlfriend didn't love the Gundam models he had uh-huh. and accidentally burned one down with a candle. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Do you remember which Gunpla model suffered the melting? I do. That oh? was a Gauf. Uh, and it was my now wife. Yeah. G O U F. Gauf? I think that's a, it's been a while. There's uh, a gun. There's a Gundam called Galf. I want to say he's got a gun. He's got gun fingers. Um, okay. I should look it up. And he's, he's, it could be purple or blue. 
Um, and I think it's a, I think it's a Galf. Yep, mm-hmm. there he is. Galf. Uh, Galf. Uh, maybe I'm saying that incorrectly. Ghoul. Goof. Galf. <laughs> Galf. Uh, yeah. Uh, melted uh, not only the arm off the Gundam, but also that uh, Dell monitor that I still have. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. Wow. So there's a divot in that that, that Dell monitor. That it's a Gundam hell of, is hell of a, a candle. Yeah. Yeah. Look, who, we can, who can say if it was an accident or not? Mm-hmm. Who, can say? who can say it could have been the arm melting off that dripped onto there no i can't see how those two things would be related <laughs> uh but yeah there's, yeah all now right. my wife okay all right uh, marry robert. the woman who melts your gundam mm-hmm. yes uh robert from alabama uh question for Vinny: given your deep interest in microsoft flight simulator i was curious if you've ever considered taking flying lessons and getting a license uh, uh no too stressful yeah okay. don't there you go too there, expensive there is- too stressful but yeah, there there is more about okay. in the email asking if it's something you may do and if not, why. But there you go. If if I had the if I had unlimited time and money, maybe I would explore it more. But um, uh, there is I you know I've talked to Drew a lot about this uh, quite a bit because he does have his pilot's license, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot, it's of, a lot work. of work, and, and it's a lot of money. It's a lot, lot of hours. money, and yeah, and a lot of upkeep too. It's a, it's not just one of those licenses that I think you get and then you're good to go and just yeah. send. 25 bucks over to the there's a lot of hours you got to log to keep that license up and all that kind of stuff and so i'll just say my uh i've had two people in my life who were both amateur flyers uh my uncle had a like single engine cessna that he used to fly to do aerial photography uh Mm. a lot of that like throughout the 80s and he loved it i flew with him he was a very good pilot but even he a guy who had pretty significant means and a lot of free time gave it up after a certain point because he's like this is just too much to deal with (laughs) And then my best friend growing up, his dad got into it after retirement, and then he wrecked his plane. Ooh, was he okay? Yeah, he broke some bones, but otherwise okay. he was fine. It's just that, that he has not flown since then, as far okay. as I know. It's, it's, it's not the kind of hobby that doesn't come with risk or a yeah. lot of investment that is maybe problematic. The, the deeper I get into it, the deeper or the more I realize that it is not a fuck around hobby. It yeah. is, it is a, they, they take everything very, and that's why I said the stress of it is like maybe a little too much for me where I, if I don't know what I'm doing, it's still a sim. It's, it's can, the same reason I'm never going to, as an amateur, try and actually learn how to drive a big rig because <laughs> it's, I know for a fact, I don't like driving giant vehicles in real uh, life. I, there's too much stick shift shit. I have to learn to do it. And yeah. I don't have the spatial awareness to make sure that I would never crash into a real person. But in a yeah. video game, I don't give a pretend. fuck about any of that. What happens? What happens if I run into traffic? I lose $500 totally. of fake money. Okay. Yeah. I, th- I said this, uh, uh, Brad, I think on the stream, the only thing I am curious about is in an emergency, if you, the three of us were at running away from, uh, zombies, let's say, or some, some, uh, aliens that are coming, could we run into an airport and could we pile into like a Cessna and be like, Vinny, can you, fl- can you get this thing mm. off the ground? And that's, I'm still kind of curious. Look, I understand I said this on the stream. There are a million things that are probably going to be different because I've never been behind the wheel of a real plane. Mm-hmm. But I, I do have that curiosity of like, could I get it started? Could I get it started and up in the air? That's that's my that's where my, I think my real world plane flying curiosity begins and ends. Sure. Uh, could, could I do it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say I probably couldn't. There's something that is not modeled in the simulation that's like, you don't feel it you know there's the engine's not turning over and then we're all dead sure uh one more tidbit from this email before we have mm-hmm. at the end i i, I considered this is robert again i considered uh-huh. getting a private's uh private pilot's license myself a couple of years ago but on my first lesson i got very motion sick oh um, it was odd because i don't get sick on planes as a passenger but something about looking out the front of the plane mm. was it evidently harder for my inner ear to process have you guys ever watched on like youtube footage of kind of basically like here's what a pilot sees out the window out the out of the cockpit yeah of a plane i, I am not into it no, no i, I like fully i fully identify horizon. with this yeah. yes it's just like vertigo like the just the yeah. sight of all these clouds rushing at you at a yeah. thousand miles an hour like <laughs> Uh, you know, I should also mention I am red green colorblind. Will would cause some issue with my pilots oh, if I tried to get sure. a pilot's license. Um, though I have read that you can get them. Just um, there are some limitations on on what you can do. Um, but yeah, that's an, another issue there. Yeah. All right, one more. Uh, yeah, or maybe a quick pair here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Both from uh, Travis and Fargo. Okay. 
Shout out to Travis for providing a lot of email material week by week. We're going to publish the, the Travis from Fargo book. Yes, <laughs> Next that's right. Emails. Yes, the, the, the Travis from Fargo daily calendar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what's your favorite bonus food? I know some people love getting an onion ring in their fries. My personal favorite is when you get a milkshake at a diner and they give you the frosty metal mixing cup on the side. Ooh, that mm. is a good one. That yes. is a great answer. Yes, um, that, that's absolutely. a good one. I, onion ring in the fries is king shit because I definitely think of onion rings as more expensive than fries by a lot. It's also that, Burger King shit because I swear to God, every time I ever got fries at Burger King, there's always an onion ring in there somewhere. Bag fries, bag fries are are, are pretty good, and I think um, I want to say Five Guys just kind of like dumps fries in the yeah. bag, and bag fries just it's just a staple of yes. uh, mm-hmm. uh, so getting your fries and then being like, mm, but I got the whole bag too. That's yeah. pretty good. Trying trying to think of other examples of this. Yeah, it's not like you usually get like an extra slice of pizza yeah, <laughs> in the thing. Right. Like that doesn't really happen. Uh, if anybody's ever been to House of Prime Rib in San Francisco, have supposedly. I've never tried because I'm too ashamed. Mm-hmm. Order and order more meat. You can, yeah. Supposedly, you can eat your prime rib, and then when you're done and they come around, you can just ask for another piece, and they'll give it to you. I've heard that as well. I've never done it. I've heard of I've heard of people doing it and then just taking the second piece home. <laughs> it oh. feels like it is. That feels out of scope. Yeah, right. That, yeah, that feels like if, okay. If you're going to take them up on the free meat, you got to be ready to. You got. <laughs> that's like bringing show a plastic everyone. tub up to a yeah. buffet. Like that's not. Yes. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, that's a. That's a little like uh, when you go to the movies and if you got popcorn, getting a refill halfway through the movies yep. and being like, no, I know you can do it, but like, you're not going to, I've only seen one person do it. My cousin did it once. Uh, I was like, wait, you're going to really take them up on it? He's like, yeah, get a refill. Oh, House Prime Rib is so good. House Prime Rib is really good. They're still around, I, I yeah. assume? Yes, yeah. that will never die. <laughs> um, Yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to think about like, um, the, just a bonus f- food item. Like, it's just... It has to be not packaged because it's not like you get an extra Oreo in a pack or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to think off the head. The, the, Everything the, is so like just regimented and like ruthlessly meted out now that like the idea of the random extra feels like you have just like struck gold. Yeah, I feel like more often than not, it's it's more like something's missing from an order, and I have to be like, oh man, yeah. they didn't put sauce in this, or yeah. like uh, they forgot the I got wings and there's no blue cheese. Uh, it's all ranch. They messed up. When I was when I was in college, some of my dirtbag friends worked at a local, like kind of quote unquote gourmet pizza place, but it was not a diet. It was like basically delivery only, more or less. Mm-hmm. And they usually closed. Kind of got to the point where <laughs> if I just rolled by about five minutes before close, they would let me come in and just make myself a pizza and leave with it. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! And I, I got to the point where I was like, it was it was these like I, I guess there are different types of commercial pizza ovens, but it was like a slot type, you know, where it was like a pretty th- small opening where you would slide yeah. the pizza in, and I guess it probably baked pretty quickly. Like I would pile the thing so high with toppings, it would like barely fit in that slot. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's and then that was like three meals. That's awesome. Uh, it was probably some tremendous health code violation. I don't know. Oh, I'm sure you could go in there and do whatever you want. It was that after is, close. Yeah, that's way better be than the one I had, which was a friend who worked at Subway, and I would do the same thing. No, like, you it know, would that's... be closing, and it, I would just get a giant fucking sandwich like shoved at me as soon as I walked in the door. <laughs> I worked at the uh, 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 snack thing at college, and uh, I would try to. This is not how you do it, but I thought by I could make a Sicilian pie, thicker pie, by folding the dough over and trying Ooh. to make my own stuff there. But yeah, we walked out of there with. The, I sh- probably shouldn't encourage this, but if a friend ordered something in the dorm, they got like four pounds of chicken fingers and stuff that we'd all eat later on. Mm-hmm. You know, they could order like, "I'll order one wing, please," and be like, no, "I'm gonna go because they did the delivery too. I'm gonna go bring them their order and uh-huh. just make a ton of food and be like, save this for for later." Listen, it was all about survival back then. It was whatever you could get. <laughs> Look, considering fucking college prices, yeah. you should be getting as many fucking chicken wings as you want. Dude, that's, that's chicken laundering. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, we got, uh, the second half of a Travis oh, email. Uh, I don't even have it in front of me, but I believe it was basically what would happen if we shaved Muppets? Oh, the, it's, that's our nightmare. That's, uh, it's the last of us three. Uh, that's the seventh seal. Did, you break that <laughs> and it fucking, it brings doom upon the, upon the earth. What, what is the Muppet creation mythology? Uh, we can't get into that here. No? We, will be, we will be pulled down. We don't, they don't have a rating for that on iTunes. Please do uh, not shave your Muppets. I cannot stress this enough. Um, I bet, bet there has been a, an episode of probably Sesame Street, maybe the Muppet Show, where somebody has gotten shaved, uh, and you could see some bare skin. I mean, look, there are some Muppets that are just skin. So, yeah, but I you're th- shaving their skin off. That's why I'm telling you not to do it. 
I just don't think you want to see Cookie Monster without the fur. I just don't think you want. It's to just going to be a lot of stuffing and netting, and you don't want to see that. Not going to be good. It's is he like good. a llama where he's like eighty percent? Eighty percent of his volume is yeah. It's just fur. Yeah, it's just muscle under there. <laughs> it's just muscle and bone. Just ripped as shit. It's great. <laughs> just, it's just <laughs> absolutely buff. Uh, the the, the right. Truvian Muppet. He's, he's the perfect Muppet. Um, that's going to do it for the emails. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We're going to wrap this one up, Brad. You've got to get back to your business here before you fly out. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, we just are, we're done. We're done here, but we are not done with next lander content. We've got Halloween, uh, spookiness going on over on the watch cast where we've had a creep show. We're doing anthology. So over on the watch cast, we have creep show. Uh, we just uh, recorded a trick or treat with Patrick uh, uh, last week, uh, and we just recorded VHS, uh, mm-hmm. uh, which was a, a lot of fun. And you can catch us talking about that next week over at Patreon.com. We recorded uh, a Never Been a Better podcast with Abby and Jeff Bacalar. That should be going up next week. You can check that out as well. Patreon.com slash NextLander. Hundreds of posts there to unlock. If you want to go over and support us there, any tier is great. We got pretty much all of our support from you, the patron. So if you uh, want to keep us going, you can go over to Patreon.com slash NextLander. Sign up for a tier that is right for you. Any tier helps out. But there is one tier that gets their name read on this here show. It's the Mysterious Benefactors tier. And I'm going to read those names for you right now. Beginning with Ten Toes of Jury Han, Sean Miller, RRE, Infelicitous Rips, Casey Park, Kelly F., Brian Lussier, Skywarp, John Hubbard, Evan Cook, Mark Wilhelm, Jerry Lee, Deidre, but in a spooky, scary house. Gary Pejski, Robert Fisher, Bunny Fiend, Jad Rita, Statics, Fantasticasm89, Brian Murphy, Randy Duax, Randy Alderson, Andrew Tiebkin, Alex Wu, It's Me JP, Edward Chick, Andrew Slosky, Steve Lynn, Matthew Herrig, David Campos, and Tyler Treese. Thanks for everybody over at the Mysterious Benefactor tier, and thanks for everybody who has gone over to patreon.com slash nextlander to support us. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching our stuff over on Twitch, on YouTube, spreading the good word, listening to them cast as we enter and leave and deal with October. My One of my favorite months, fall is here. Mm-hmm. Brad, I know you're under uh, strenuous circumstances there in North Carolina, but it's fall. Do, yeah. you miss, do you miss the fall there? It's kind of nice oh, weather. God, it's amazing. It's it's, it's full on tourists thing. Okay. It's like mm-hmm. it is a it is a very well established like people flock to this area in the fall to see the leaves. It's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, it's very nice. Fall I'm sure un- under better circumstances, but yeah. uh, uh, it is fall, and I appreciate yeah. it. it. Just puts me in a better mood. Yeah, I, I think I've come to find fall is my favorite season. Actually, in like mid adulthood, in the last yeah. couple of years, I don't I don't know where that came from. I never realized that before. We are in the autumn of our lives. lives. Might be something to that. (laughs) Uh, Thanks, everybody, for listening. Like I said, you can go and uh, check all that stuff out on the Patreon. You can go catch us uh, streaming. We had uh, Will Smith on for some Space Marine, and we played Chain Together, uh, which you can go check out as well. Uh, This Friday, I think Alex and I are going to go check out some Steam Next Fest stuff uh, that is going on. I think that ends Monday, so we might go check some of those demos out. And I believe I'm going to try and play some Silent Hill on Thursday and crack that open and see what's going on there. So you can check that stuff out over at our Twitch channel. Thank you, Alex Navarro. Thank you. Thank you, Brad Shoemaker. Thank you. And we'll be back next week. <laughs>